Okay. <laughs> All right, let me know if you guys can hear me okay. I had to like reset everything in OBS. I don't know why. I was so jacked. Um, and the only way to test it is if I'm live streaming. So I had to create like a private video in order to just test everything out. Let me see. All right, everything seems like it's doing okay now. Hi, Artie. Hi, David. Hi, Adrian. Hi, Jasmine. I am so sorry. I don't even know what happened, but my OBS settings were a reset. So for some reason, I had to like reestablish that I wanted to record the audio or I don't know. I don't I can't explain it, but we're going to start over. Uh, so I appreciate you coming back. So sorry about that. Kind of embarrassing. Um, but yeah, let's let's try this one more time. Please let me know if there are any other problems. Let's do this. All right. I can see it fluctuating. I'm like so paranoid. I've never had such a jacked up. All right. 41 minutes of your life wasted. I'm so sorry, David. <laughs> All right, I think. Hold on, I'm just gonna mute so I can hear my own recording. Thank the Lord. All right, let's try this again. Previous autosave will be lost. We're not gonna talk about that. <laughs> All right. I'm also just gonna leave the mouse sensitivity as it was. Um, thank you, Artie. All right, how's that sound? Loud and clear. So I can't tell the mouse sensitivity. It's so like hoppy. Should have messed with that before I uh, brought you guys back, but you know it's me. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I can't tell if making it more sensitive would be better or making it less sensitive. Yes, please. Where is it? Oh, it's so freaking slippery. I'm just gonna do defaults. Where is it? All right, let's just let's just go with the way the game intended it. Saints. I'm still holding the cup. something, Peggy? Huh? Hear what? I thought I heard someone yelling, or I don't know, uh, how? Forrest, is this a joke? No, I, <laughs> I almost swore I heard something. Oh, and here I was thinking you'd finally started to ease up. You probably just heard some cats outside. Cats? You know, four legs, whiskers, tails, not dogs. <laughs> I know what a cat is. Not. But I mean, does Gallows Creek have a stray cat problem or something? Not since the rats moved in. Anyway, you ready to do the pre-flight checks? Seriously, do we have to do these checks every time? Oh, and do you have to call them that? Reggie oh, pays us to check the equipment before each show, and he pays us to call it a pre-flight check. But if you're sure you don't want to... Press for Peggy. Oh, jeez Louise. Uh, do you need a tutorial on how to use the DJ desk? Uh, let's do the check. All right, fine. This Let's get through this. All righty, this, this is your captain speaking. Really? Come on, let's have a bit of fun with it I don't for think once. So. 
Buckle in, folks. We're about to hit some tubular rents. Let's start with record playing. <sighs> okay. Grab a record, stick it on the player, and hit play. Easy. Uh, let's do the hang. Oh, no. no I can't push back. Oh, we're, we're stuck with it. We're going to the Uh, Forrest, you need to grab a record and stick it on the turntable. why I had to set it on that way. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. The record box is on the left, and the record player is on the right. Oh my Pick a record and stick it on the turntable. Shush. Then hit play. Got it. Don't talk to me like I'm a child. Great. Now turn it off. Lovely. All right. Sure Up next, phone for. line yeah. buttons. Your captain will be waiting to take your call on line one. I know. Irony. Okay, so this is line one. All right, Peggy. Ready for you on line one. Who's Peggy? This is Captain Donald Key calling. Call me Don. You get it? Yeah, it's a riot. <laughs> Great, and button two works just the same. So, let's move to the Peggy button. You mean the producer line? Like I said, the Peggy button. Press it when you need my help during the show. Hmm, is there a Peggy mute button? They haven't invented it yet. Now, come on. The Peggy button is the third one on the phone line. I, I labeled it. it for you. <sighs> Press for Peggy. This is your brain, Forrest. Sorry I made you such an unfun turkey. I'm a turkey now, am I? Okay. Are we almost done? <laughs> Sound blaster next. That's an easy one. Yep. Peggy's a dork. Sound blaster, is that what he said? There we go. Always good for a cheap laugh. All right, we're almost done. Just the volume sliders left. These should let you affect pretty much everything. But let's test it with a record. Play a record and change the volume with the music slider. All right, seems to be all working. We done, Captain? <laughs> we sure are. Swiper Coming in for landing. Local I'm time? Uh, should not encourage you. I knew you had a fun side. It's pretty it's ironic, my fun yeah, side that, that gets me in trouble. Uh, the first thing you now, go through is let's audio get the show check. started. My, my audio was After your up. introduction, our first segment is Guess That Scream. I thought that was a joke. Nope, and don't blame me for this one. It's Reggie all the way, and he demands we do it tonight. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. I'm Forrest. I'm Forrest. Okay, you're live in three... To... 189.16 <laughs> Good evening, Gallows Creek. This is your host, Forrest Nash, and you're listening to 189.16 The Scream. Before we start taking your calls tonight on Gallows Creek's only late night phone in talk show, I need to let you know about a special competition we have for you this evening. <sighs> Guess that scream. This is actually one of the station manager's better ideas. Here's how it works. I'm going to play you a scream, then you call and guess that scream. Don't sigh on live We need you to guess radio? why they're screaming. Did they stub their toe, saw off a finger, or discover the corpse of a loved one? That's good. Now, Forrest, hit them with the tape. We'll play that scream in just a second. Listen close, and then call in to... Guess that scream. Oh my god, Forrest. Peggy, what do you mean, play the tape? I used to have a tape guy do that for me. You're not in Chicago anymore, Forrest. Here in Gallows Creek, you get to be your own tape guy. Come on, I gave it to you yesterday. Which tape is it? Forrest, you do have the tape right. You knew we were doing this tonight. What are you Peggy, talking about? let's be real. Guess that scream is a terrible idea. No, I... I don't have the tape. Oh, thank God. It <laughs> may be a stupid idea, but that doesn't mean it can't be fun. <laughs> We're going to need to scream tonight, Forrest. And you're the one at the mic, so... Oh, he gets to scream. I hate when I Scream! I used to go out all across America, and now I'm just screaming into a mic in a backwater town. Jesus. Come on, Forrest, just do it! That's enough dead air already. Just think of a scream and let it rip! 
Yeah, what is up oh, on the God. radio? What are people listening to? Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm back. I had to step away there for a second. Listen close, and then call in to guess that scream. Oh my God, you have to sigh every time. Okay, so well, here goes nothing. Oh look, there is no timer so far. Uh, the perturbed Yeti scream, the falling from a cliff scream, or the drowning scream? That one sounds weird. Um, I'm thinking drowning. <laughs> Well, folks, there you have it. Call in with your guesses, and if you get it right, you could win two tickets to the amazing Maze Maze and one free fried dough. Yeah. Fried dough? This is Just sad. call in at 555-239-KFAM with your guess. Now, here's some music while you get dialing. Wait. Should I introduce the song? Uh, no, I just started playing it. Oh God, Forrest, <laughs> that was amazing. Thanks. I can't wait to hear what people think that was. <laughs> How the hell did I get into this He's mess? He's choking on a set. Right enough, Forrest. That's gonna be the highlight of my week. Okay, now. Oh, Forrest, there's a call coming in. Okay. Time to turn the music off. Do I stop it or do I just turn it down? I guess I'll stop it. I don't know. Very weird. Music is off. Where's my phone? Welcome to 189.16 The Scream, caller. You're talking to Forrest Nash. What's going on with you tonight? Forrest! Thank God I made it through. My name is Leslie Harper. I'm the 911 operator and police dispatcher for Gallows Creek. Why are you calling me? Are you calling to guess that scream? Slow night? Shouldn't you be working? Leslie, I've got to say I'm always happy to have a caller, but uh, shouldn't our 911 operator and police dispatcher be minding the phones? Yeah, no kidding. What? Oh, Forrest, you have no idea. Listen, I found a body. I need your help. <laughs> 911 is calling me to report a body. Interesting setup. All right. I'll bite. What's the punchline then? Forrest, I recognize her voice. I'm pretty sure that actually is our 911 operator. Why I think this is this? real. Peggy, I'm not going to be happy if this is a prank. I don't do prank segments on my shows. It's in my contract. Is it? Forrest, I really don't think this is a prank. Why would she call me? You should call the sheriff. Leslie, if you're telling the truth, you should report this to the sheriff. What was his name, Sheriff? Andrews, or whatever. I'm at the sheriff's office right now. Wait, what? Sheriff Matthews is dead. What? Sheriff Matthews is dead? I couldn't get any response from the department. That's never happened before, so I came to the station and... I found him. Oh, God. Poor Sheriff Matthews. Do you know what happened to him? Someone got him. Someone got up very close and... Oh, it's okay. I really don't want to say what they did to him. Did he fight back? I don't know. <laughs> I think he tried. He's surrounded by bullet casings. God, I think he tried Jason to ben. shoot at whoever Can it you was, have a but... Can wrote up for that? Not to scream? Or not no pranks? Where are the other officers? Is there anyone else at the station? Well, is, is anyone else at the station? Anyone who can help you? Or, or who might be responsible? No. I checked everywhere. Deputy Martinez is here, but she's knocked out, tied up, and locked in a holding cell. I called you right after I found her. God, wait. Please don't tell me that this hick town only has two cops. Don't be ridiculous. We have three, but Officer Gunderson is on leave in Cancun. I think so. Leslie, this is a live do you call. have any idea who could have done this? Not a clue. I didn't see anything on my way over. Leslie, you need to call over to Henderson or Quiet Ridge. They need to send someone over from their department. I tried, but I can't call anything but local numbers. Something's wrong. I'll have to go there myself, let them know what's going on, and bring help back with me. But if you leave while there's a murderer on the loose, who's gonna man the emergency line? That's why I called. Forrest, I've routed oh. all 911 calls to come in to you. Oh my 
my god! No, this is a bad idea. This... I mean, I can't think of a... Whatever. We'll be optimistic. This is so stupid. You can count on me. Uh, I'll do what I can. Thank you, Forrest. <laughs> You're the only person with experience manning a phone line around here. I literally have two You're the lines. only person equipped for the job. I don't believe Besides, you. there are lots of transferable skills between the two. It's like an interview. You ask questions to get information you can use. Keep people talking, you know? Guide the conversation and know when to jump in. You do know that I'm so good at interviews, they sent me from Chicago to Gallows Creek, right? So I've heard. But that doesn't matter. And besides, there are two of you. You can talk to each other, discuss ideas, work together. Hell, let's have some on-the-job training right now. I have an emergency. I need to get an unconscious serious. Deputy Martinez out of that holding cell. It looks like whoever attacked her threw the keys into the cell after they locked the door. Is there any way you can reach the keys? No. There aren't any bars to the cell, and the door itself only has a food tray slot. And that's too narrow for me to reach through. There's gotta be another way in. Another sort of... There's got to be another set of keys somewhere in that office. Those can't be the only one. Of course. Yes, there must be another set. Where might another set be? Opter's desk. Check Sheriff Matthews. Uh... I don't know. Maybe Sheriff Matthews had a set of keys on him when he... You know. I couldn't see any at a glance, but... I didn't really look up close. One second. These are hard choices already. And this is just a test. Oh, I think I might be sick. Sorry, Sheriff. I'm just gonna turn you over and... Oh. Please don't stare at me. <laughs> I... Oh, wait. That might be them. I wonder if it was right no matter what. I, 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 I think like I got the cell keys. Looks like Sheriff Matthews might have saved his deputy. Do the keys work? <laughs> Give me a minute to untie Deputy Martinez. I'll be right back. So far, so good, I suppose. How are you feeling, Forrest? Uh, like this is a very inappropriate situation. I can't handle this all night. I think we can handle this. I'm quitting AF KFAM if this is a prank. Uh, I'm gonna yeah, be optimistic. That seemed to go okay. Maybe Leslie was right. Maybe we can handle this 911 business. That's the spirit, Forrest. I think you're right. Though, I have to say, I don't I, agree. Well, I really hope this is the only call like this we get. Same. That's not. Come on, Martinez. Only there we go. Calls. I'm just going to sit you in your office chair. I'll head to my car in a minute. I'm back. Deputy Martinez is still out cold. Sound didn't change at all. I'm taking her in the car with Operative me to get help flow, in Henderson. Yes. If the killer came back now, Martinez would be a sitting duck. Uh, you're leaving? We're on our own? It's the right thing to do? That's a good idea. I'm optimistic. I don't want to take any risk right now. Play. Thank you, Forrest. I mean, I'm not going to talk like You and Peggy but... just worked together like you did earlier. You can do this. Now, I'll be back as soon as I... What? My car! My car is on fire! What do you mean it's on fire? Somebody else has How the fire. hell? Did it just go up in smoke? What happened? Wait. What? No. No way. This can't. Well, Forrest, we have big trouble. What's happening? Uh, what's that noise? It sounds like whistling? Whistling? It can't be. Oh my god. I can see him, but he's dead, right? Right? With that mask, and how the hell is he? Who, Leslie? Who? The whistling man. The oh, whistling yeah. man? Who's the whistling man? He was a serial killer back in the 50s. Wore that mask. But he's dead. He's... What the hell? Oh, God. Do you think... Do you think he attacked Sheriff Matthews and Deputy Martinez? He's coming this way. Stay inside and lock the doors. Right. I don't know if that's gonna do anything. I'm listening. Forrest, come on! You need to focus! What? what is I that? think we need a new 
Thailand. My car is torched. We need to think. Uh, I am the station. Take a, take a police cruiser. There should be police cruisers at the sheriff's office, right? Like, you should take one of those. I... Yeah. Yeah, that could work. Because, like, they Why don't have a brain. Has any... Uh, just... Reach into your pocket there, deputy, and... Yes! Got him! Keys for squad car three. I saw that parked out front when I got here. Nice one, Forrest. Good thinking. But... Wait... How am I supposed to get us to the car? The whistling man is right there. Deputy Martinez surely carries a gun, right? Could you use that? Deputy Martinez's gun is missing. I guess the whistling man must have done something with it. The sheriff must have a gun, right? Can, can you see it? There was a gun next to him. Let me grab it. It made a decision anyways for me. I... Shit. It's empty. He must have emptied it trying to defend himself. Yeah, I guess what to say. Is there a weapon lock up? Can you see any other weapons? There must be a weapon lock up in the station, right? Could you grab something from there? I saw it earlier, but as you might have guessed, it was locked. But maybe one of these keys I got earlier will help. Let me see. Yeah, she is dead. No. Bye, Artie. No. How soon have we No. Please have a good day. Uh, shit! None of the keys work. Or are, are there any other weapons lying around that you could use? I didn't see anything earlier. Um, uh, let me check Deputy Martinez's belt. Oh my god. I shouldn't have to tell her to look for weapons. All right. kind of weird. It looks like the whistling man left her with a baton, pepper spray, and taser. I can only hold one if I'm carrying Deputy Martinez. Which should I take? Uh, definitely, I would say the taser, but that, I don't know. Because I want to say the taser because it's more effective, but then she'd have to get closer to him. Mace taser? Yeah, I'm thinking taser. I mean, it's got to be the taser, right? Got it. I'm just going to grab Deputy Martinez. I feel like she's going to end up macing herself in the face. Wait, do you hear that? No, I, I can't hear anything. Exactly, it's gone quiet. No more knocking. Can you still see the whistle? Don't look, don't look. Be careful. Be careful. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> Me neither. But it's an opening, and I've got to take it. This is like okay. a... Okay, Deputy Martinez, if you can hear me, it's time to move. This is like a game for those people that, like, Just yell on at me. the screen when they're watching a horror yep. movie. Which is... There you go. Are you sure about this, Leslie? No time like the present, right? So, here we go. Run, bitch! Again, you're hooked into dispatch now, so I should be able to radio you when I reach the car. If I reach it. <sighs> Speak to you soon. Shock that move. Good luck, Leslie. Good luck, Leslie. Makes a big difference. The tone? That's, that's one brave that's woman. Now. God, I hope she makes it through this. <sighs> you know, I've got to say... This really wasn't what I expected when I came into work today. Well, they always say you have to be ready for everything in live radio. Oh, oh I think we've got Leslie back on the line. Oh no. I'm putting the call through. Oh no. Hello? Forrest? Peggy? This is Leslie. Are you there? Over. We're here. Over. We're here. Leslie. So I, I guess you made it to the car then. Over? This Sorry about the CB radio. chat. Old habit. But yes, we made it to the car. Deputy Martinez is in the passenger seat, still out cold. I don't see the whistling man anywhere, and I don't plan to wait for him. So I'm going to get us moving. I keep Jesus! God damn it! Get, get back! Get away from her! He's in the car. Leslie, what's, Leslie, what's happening? The whistling! No! Get off her, you son of a bitch! Daze him. I'm nervous! Leslie, what are you waiting for? Get out of there! Don't worry, Deputy Martinez. We're out of here. Leslie, are you two okay? Did Leslie. you get away? Or... Forrest, that taser? Yay. Definitely the right call. Oh my god, I can't believe we escaped. Well done, Leslie. You saved a life. 
just another day for you. I'm gonna say oh pepper God, spray, yeah. and he's gonna mask. Well, let me tell you, a bad idea. I prefer doing it from your side of the boat. Leslie, how long Sick. do you think it's gonna take to get help? Gallows Creek has a nowhere's bill, Taser, what's a good but chance? it's pretty damn close. It's going to take a while, maybe two, three hours each way. Slightly less if I put my foot down. We'll do our best. We'll do our best to keep everyone safe until then. Thank you. Just do what you did just now, and Gallows Creek this is going map to be okay. Makes me very nervous. Anyway, once I'm in. I think Deputy Martinez is starting to stir. Forrest, Peggy, I've got to go. I'll be out of range soon, but I'll radio back as soon as I can once I got the cavalry. Toggle, text passwords, Alright, take care. Take care, Leslie. Be safe out there. Good luck, Leslie. Feel better soon, Deputy Martinez. Don't die. Also, don't die. Folks, you heard it here. We've got a killer on the streets of Gallows Creek tonight. Please make sure to stay safe. And Leslie, we're counting on you. What do you mean? We're gonna get back to the show, meanwhile. If you have anything on your mind, <laughs> or have any information about this Whistling Man character, then give us a call. We'll talk here on 189.16, The Scream. For now, Here's another hit record for you all to enjoy. This is not what I signed up for, Peggy. This is actually insane. Did she really say it's gonna take her four hours? This guy's gonna kill, kill half the employees. town in four hours. He is probably Rest, listening. That's not helpful. I know, I know, I just... <sighs> Who is this Whistling Man character anyway? He was a oh. serial killer back in the 50s. Edward Marshall oh, Mooney. <laughs> Went around in a freaky mask, whistling, and killed about a dozen folks in Gallows Creek. No reason for it. No motive. He just Uh, okay, what happened to him? Okay. What happened to him? Well, police chased him up to Ellis Point one night. We call it Whistling Point now. And it was, well, it was on this night, actually. The police Amazing. cornered him, and he jumped into the river. His body was never found. So is he alive? Dead? I mean, what's the story? Story is, he's biding his time, waiting to take revenge on the town. All right, that's the story. What's the truth? Other than we have a whistling killer on our hands tonight, I don't know. <laughs> Awkward. Uh, we'll do our best, guess we'll find out. I guess we'll find out what we're dealing with. Whether we like it or not. I guess so. <sighs> at least we got the word out, I guess. What kind of listening figures do we get at this time? On a Thursday after midnight? Could be around 35? 35? Isn't 3,500? Huh. I didn't realize Gallows Creek was that large. No, 35 people. At best. 35 at best? <laughs> 35? At best. 35, yeah. It's a school night. Those are pretty good numbers, guys. What's I don't, the I don't, population I don't know of Gallows Creek? Means, I, think those I don't are know good exactly. Numbers. A little over a thousand? Oh. How many did you get before? You know. Before my career exploded and I ended up on a midnight hour talk show in the town of a thousand people? Yeah. Before that. <laughs> Around five for most shows on the low end? Big Gas could pump that up to 10, 15, easy. 5,000 on the low end? We could only dream of that. Five million. Oh my million? Yeah, sometimes that's just the way it goes. At least the whistling man hasn't killed me yet. I guess. Yeah, I guess we're gonna learn a lot about perspective tonight, huh? Oh, we have a call coming in. Okay. Take it when you're ready. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Yeah. Hello, right. first, caller. First real You're live call, guys. Okay. Nine point sixteen. The scream. Is everything uh, all right? Uh -oh. Okay. Uh, who is this? Are you? Uh, hello. Hello.
Okay. What's your name and why are you calling in? Unconvincing whistling. You know my name. I've come back from the dead. This is just to a random person. No one safe. Do you accept requests? I've got a list of names I'd love to see in the obituaries. Oh, uh, maybe you must make a sacrifice to he us. Sounds like a stoner. A sacrifice to us? I, I mean, me. We want cheese dusted pretzels. I mean, I want cheese dusted pretzels. Or I'll cut your face off. What is that background? Goddamn kids. I'm cutting them off. Not yet. I want to deal with them. Uh, we also want a mega gulp. Okay. <sighs> okay, so cheese dusted pretzels and a mega gulp behind the gas station. You got it. Whistling man. Uh, a wise choice. See you soon, Morris Nash. Needless to say, I won't actually be going out to the gas station to buy anything for these kids. And none of you should be going out tonight either. We've got an actual killer out there. Anyway, this next one's dedicated to all of you staying inside with your doors and windows locked. I don't know if picking the music makes any difference. I also don't know what this is. Uh, oh. Peg, ah! <laughs> what the hell was that? Kids pretending to be a killer who right now is stalking the town? I don't know if it's it a thing. A thing? Oh, kids around here. They pull pranks pretending to be him. By pretending to be this whistling man character? They think it's funny, but it's not. It's not funny at all. And there's no chance that our whistling man was just a prank. That Leslie... No, like that... Microwave. That's real. <sighs> Christ. Let's stay positive. We still have a show to do. <laughs> we already have another caller on the line. Oh, man, All right. really? Let's do this. All right. Music stopped. And call. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. What? Oh, I God. need the sheriff right this away. This is so awkward. Okay, right. Well, I'm filling in for 911 tonight. What's your name and what's your trouble? Uh, my name is Sandra Sharp, and I need the this cops now. This is so unprofessional. Uh, the cops aren't. Coming. I'm sorry, but the cops aren't coming. Leslie's on her way to Henderson for help. What? Oh, God. Listen, you've got to help me then. I drove to the edge of town for a jazz run, and now some psycho dressed like. The whistling man. A jazz run? It's a jazz run. Oh god. It's actually happening. Oh. You went out for a jazz run? What what is that? What is it? It's jazz running, baby. And it got my butt all the way back to my car before I got slashed. Oh. But I dropped my keys somewhere along the way. Shit. I never locked the door because I've got a place to hide, but I can't get moving. Go back to the keys. Sounds like you lost it. You'll be fine. Is there anywhere else you can go? Is there anywhere else you can go? Do you have any friends nearby? This music is. Oh, super I'm not going cool. back out there. I. I'm glad you're liking it, Adrian. I was worried it might be a little too slow, but it's like we're watching a movie oh, together. Oh, he's back. <gasps> Look, I don't know a thing about cars, but I gotta start this engine without the keys, yeah, and you're gonna cool. have to help me. Wait, 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 I don't... Uh, if it helps, I've got a toolkit buried beneath my spare sweatbands. I'll call you back when I find it. Oh, God. Oh, she's gonna call me back? You're listening to 189.16. She's gonna call me back? Scream. Hosted by me, Forrest Nash. Your friendly neighborhood radio host. Mechanic and... Savior. Sit tight while the record spins, folks. This one goes out to you, Sandra. 
Okay, let's intro should I introduce a song? Are you gonna prompt me this time? Yes. Now it's time to go with The Flow. And this is their oh. hit, Crying for Help. The Flow. Screwdriver or Doesn't hammer? Doesn't the station have a show about cars? The Tamora Twins or something. Start the car. Timberline Twins Talk Motors. Hi, David. Yeah. You know they're not even brothers. Really? They look the same, though. I know, but they're not even related. It's weird. I don't. I asked them about it once, or and they got it's really okay. sweaty and defensive. Anyway, go see what you can find. What? Yes. The You're offices are out the door and down the hall. All right. What was I doing? So I can interact with so many different things. <laughs> so many locked doors, so few keys. It's an office. Hey, that's us. It doesn't have a dispenser, it's kind of weird. Gallows Creek, Chili Cook-Off, Champion, 1984. Kind of looks like Bender. <laughs> um, I know I'm supposed to, I think I'm supposed to be finding. What is this? Nothing, I guess. That's random. <laughs> okay. Just investigating while we have some downtime. Now, this has to be important. Oh, okay. Twins, I borrowed your car. Wait. I borrowed your car theft magazine. Those huevos rancheros aren't sitting right. I'm gonna need something to read. Pray for me. <laughs> okay, is it this? Oh, it's in the bathroom. So, I'm assuming it's the men's room. You can't follow this game. We are currently uh, just a radio DJ that is also being a 911 operator because there's no one else in the town to do that job, apparently. This looks useful. Is it useful? Let's see. Use a screw- Oh, okay. Alright, use a screwdriver. Keyless entry technique. Um, step one, screwdriver. And then step two, remove the steering column cover. Check the serial number, then- Check the serial number and then strip and twist the following wires together. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, the doors must close on their own over time. If there is a four before a three and a number seven in the number, that's red and blue. Oh, shit. I have to memorize all this? Okay. Check the serial number, then strip and twist the following wires together. So if the serial number is four before three and a seven, there's six anywhere, and it doesn't start with the five. There's a zero at the end. He does Oh my god. I am not confident in this. Alright, then. Now strip the purple wire. Brush the purple wire against the twisted wires from step three. I don't want to go in there until I'm ready. That's so dark. It's, okay, so brush the purple wire. So you're basically picking a wire based on the serial number, stripping a purple wire, and brush the purple wire against the twisted wires from step three. If the radio turns on and won't turn off, cut the left pink wire. Do not cut the other pink wires. This will trigger the alarm. If the alarm is sounding, cut the triple braid. Oh my God, this is just making me nervous. All right, let's just, let's just do it. Let's just do it. I think I'll have it on me the whole time. Wow, how nice of them. All right, guys, I have a feeling it's coming. Did you find anything? Yeah, I found a magazine about hot wiring cars. How convenient. Well, that sounds perfect. When you're ready, shut the music off. I'm not ready, but I'm gonna 
session. That's about Caller on line one. Thanks, Peggy. We're back with 189.16, The Scream. How are you holding up, Sandra? The creep's looking through the parking lot trying to find me. But I've got my tools, and I'm ready to get this hunk of junk moving. All right, let's save Sandra. How do we start this baby? Okay, put the screwdriver in the... Put the screwdriver in the ignition and twist clockwise. Here goes, baby. I... I... Oh. Screwdriver's too fat. I had a feeling I should have just skipped that. What next? Okay, unscrew the steering column. Unscrew the steering Hit column. Hit the steering wheel with a hammer. All right. Just turn. Just turn. One, two, one, two. Just... This is so corny. <laughs> Exactly what you're seeing. Tell me exactly what you see. Okay, we can do this. You see, there's a red wire, a blue wire, a yellow wire, a, a green wire, and a brown wire. Okay. Uh, what's the serial number on the steering column? What's the serial number on the steering column? The number is five seven six eight nine four three two zero. Oh God. Okay. It's. Okay, so it doesn't start with five. Five, seven, six, eight, nine, four. If there is a... Oh, at least it's not time. I have lots of time. Okay, so... If there is a four before a three, there is a four before a three, and a number seven, it's, so I think it's red and blue. If there's a zero at the end... Oh, shit. And the three doesn't come before six. Oh shit, these both apply. What the fuck? It says... If there is a 4 before a 3 and a 7 in the number. There is a 4 before a 3 and a 7 in the number. If there, But if there's a 0 in the end, which there is, and a 3 doesn't come before a 6. Oh shit, is it both? Red and yellow and red or blue. How is it not both? What the fuck? There, if there is a zero at the end and a three doesn't come before a six, a three doesn't come before a six. But there's also a four before a three and a seven. Okay, I'm just gonna go with. Okay, just in case it says if the radio turns on. Cut the left pink wire. Okay, let's do. Strip and twist together the red and yellow wires. All right. We take the red and the yellow and we twist. This is nerve-wracking. Oh, perfect. I also see a pink and purple wire. What next? Okay, we're gonna take the purple wire. Strip the purple wire and brush against the twisted wires. Strip the purple wire and brush against the I'm twisted nervous. wires. Okay, okay. We strip and we brush and. <gasps> Yay! Yeah, buddy! Fantastic work, baby! Woo! Hey, First one down. down to the jazz studio. You get in for free! Just keep driving. You just keep driving yeah. now, okay? And get home safe. Get home safe, Sandra. Will do, babies. Thank God. I'm a Mexican. I mean, we did it, Forrest. We sure did. Here comes another hit track that we're ja excited to share with you. And remember, if you're also having car troubles, then tune in to Timberline Twins Talk Motors here on 189.16, Monday to Friday at 5. Take it away, Forrest. Hope you enjoy this one as much as I do. That was nerve I still can't believe this is happening. <sighs> right? Like Gallows Creek didn't already have enough to worry about? What do you mean? Gallows Creek is a miserable place to live. That's so rude. Really? Miserable? It's nothing personal, Peggy, but it's not Chicago. Or, hell, 
It's not really anywhere. Well, I like it here. People are polite and, uh... Stab happy? Don't be awful, Forrest. Come on, there must be something you like about this place. Some folks, yeah, some folks have been okay. You're not terrible. After a while. Not terrible after a while? High praise coming from Forrest Nash. You know what I mean, Peggy. I do. It's Forrest Nash for... I think you're swell. Anyway, I hope the killer is done for the night. Nope. And that Leslie gets back soon. Me too. Alright, hold on guys. I will be right back. Um, I need to go blow my nose. I'm still trying to figure out if I am finally developing allergies as I am the only person in my family who does not have them or if I'm just getting a cold. <laughs> yeah, hit the like button for Flo. Thanks, Adrian. Can we at least call off that stupid guess the scream contest now? Yeah, that'd probably be a good idea. 42 minutes, we've saved one person, two people from dying. Caller on line one. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash, host of 189.16, The Scream. And tonight's 911 stand-in. Hey, Forrest. My name is Brian. Uh, uh, Brian Ponty. Brian Ponty of Ponty's Pizza. Pizza. Hello, Brian Ponty. Hello, Brian Ponty. What have you got to say about what's happening? I'm so happy that that Deputy Martinez survived. I've seen her a lot over the years down here at Ponty's Pizza. Oh, you did a really great job. And uh, as a thanks for all you did there, I just this wanted to tell you that I'm sending you some coupons for free pizza here at Ponty's Pizza. That's wow, Brian. Right. Scottish. That's really good of you. But Why Scottish? You really don't have to, though. I oh, for pizza. It's the least I can do. And if you like it, well, you're in luck. Because we're always running great deals that'll have you eating for pennies. Sounds great, bro. And let me tell you, the pizza we have is to die for. Oh. That was awkward. Yeah, that didn't come out great. 
I'm so sorry, timed. <laughs> well, I just hope I didn't put you or anyone else Hi, on uh, coming on back. down <laughs> to Ponty's Pizza. We've got a great special this weekend. We're just talking about pizza. beer and pizza deal. Wait a minute. Come on down to Ponty's Pizza this weekend. You've just got to pay for one slice to get yourself. God damn it. You're just calling in to advertise your shop. Peggy, hang up on him. Done. Oh, real quick, before I forget, it's probably time we played a paid ad. Now, a word from our sponsors. You know how to play an ad, right? No. Is that what this is? No. Nope. In flight check time. Christ. Oh, shit. Our captain would like to remind you that the station is required by law to play advertisements from our sponsors. Grab a cassette and stick it in the player. I did that. It's already in there. Accept it. Move forward. The cassette player is on the desk in front of you, just above the sound blaster. There should be a cassette in the box nearby. Do you seek ancient wisdom? Do you want to double your power? Are you ready to unlock your inner warrior for only $24.99? Weird then step into Master Robbie's deadly dojo it. of Kung Rate and receive direct by video warrior instruction from me, Master Robbie. You will learn the four qualities like of an ultimate conqueror. The power of the alligator. Aye. The discipline of the tarantula. <laughs> the speed of the tuna. <laughs> the poise of the scorpion. <laughs> and the wisdom of the bullfrog. <laughs> Using classified techniques, I'll unlock your inner chi after only five 30-minute video sessions. Ultimate power and wisdom can be yours now for the low, low price of only $24.99. Just call 555 usa to take your first step to becoming it a champion. It is free nowadays. There you have it. Never forget the element of surprise! Oh, okay. If you buy today, you'll receive two Do I have additional to to this whole VHS tapes. My God. The tornado technique and karate love me. It's American? Call today. Low, low flex. That tells me nothing. All right. Do people really buy this kind of thing? Don't pretend like you're not interested. I mean, I wouldn't buy them, but <laughs> I might watch them. I guess. Yeah, I bet karate love making sure is something. What? Uh, I uh. <laughs> is Forrest Nash at a loss for words? Do I have a Let's just get to the show. Fresh on my. Wow, what a deal. What a Only $24.99. No. And I'm Radio not Roger? just saying that because they're paying for the airtime. But unless they pay us more, then it's time to get the show moving along with our next caller. Okay. Uh, we'll turn that off. I'm assuming that's the call. Welcome to The Scream with me, Forrest Nash. Yeah, Leslie. This is Maurice Russell from The Gallows Reporter. I'm at the office. This guy just broke in downstairs and... He thinks I'm Leslie. Forrest Nash? I want to speak to 911. Put Leslie on. What? God, another one? Can you imagine knowing your 911 operator by name? You haven't heard, have you? I am 911. I am 911. At least for tonight, anyway. Karate Commerce Sutra. <laughs> I don't care who you are. Just put yeah. me on with Sheriff Matthews. Sheriff Matthews is dead. Ted? What happened? Why'd you tell him that? Did you witness the incident? Are you willing to do an interview for the reporter? Who the fuck is this guy? I can cite you as an anonymous source, if that's a concern. How's the radio? How's it a... We're on live air! We're live on the air. Anything we say can and will be broadcast. Live on... Damn it. All right. There's obviously a lot more going on than I know. Yeah, you, there's a lot happening tonight. You said someone broke in. That's nothing to get worked up about. It is. Some idiot kid just broke in. Dressed as the whistling man. I kind of want to let someone die. <laughs> they get worse every year. Just to see, you know, just and to experience this it. punk wasn't even a disappointing twinkle in his daddy's eye when Edward Marshall Mooney stalked the town. But I was there. I covered it. Ooh, some stuff down here. 
It's a gum. Ew. I don't think of the teeth. You don't understand. That's not a prankster. That's the whistling man. Of course it's not. It's a stupid kid. Every year this happens. They think it's funny. Not a big deal, old man. But they didn't live through the terror 30 years ago. He screwed, guys. Anyway, I know for a fact. Edward Marshall Mooney is dead. I don't know who I'm looking at on the security monitor. Edward Marshall Mooney? he killed Sheriff Matthews? Where are you now? I'm in the boardroom. Upstairs. We got security cameras all around the building. You can watch them on any We're TV just... set here. There's a set in the boardroom. Can you get out of there? Maurice, is there any way you can get out of there? Ah, I sure as shit hope so, kid. But I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. That crash you heard was him tipping over my filing cabinets. He's blocking the stairs. I'm guessing the stairs are the only way out? That's right. And it would take me a good few minutes to move those cabinets. We need to do something. But what? All we can do from here is... Tell him what to do? Forrest, I think I've got it. Why don't we call the killer? They'd have a bunch of phones set up across the office, right? In different rooms, with different extensions? So we call one of them. Draw the killer away. Alright. That sounds like by Murray's time. That could work. Exactly, Peggy. It's worth a shot. I can hear you, you know. The son of a bitch Madeline hasn't Peggy. killed me yet. Yeah, sorry, Maurice. Peggy and I were just trying to figure out... <sighs> you realize how stupid that plan sounds, right? What you got, bitch? For that to be successful, you're gonna need every phone extension. Plus, a plan of the entire office floor. All delivered while the killer is on route. I've got it. And thank God I've always been cool under pressure. Oh my gosh, I'm Don't go it. anywhere. Do I need more information? Are we get gold? Kyle and Peggy, what do we do? You... You don't think the killer got him, do you? Mr. Sense. Russell. I'm here. Freak's going to be here any second, too. Yeah, go check your fax together, machine. Though. Don't... Let me down. Fax machine, fax machine, run. I can't run. That's not a function in this game. Ugh. No. Wait, no, there isn't. No, there's not. I gotta go to the fax machine. Go, Forrest. I'm trying. The fax machine's in the office on the other side of the hall. Thanks, Peggy. Be right back. I guess there was dialogue. My bad. Okay. Go to the office on the other end of the hall. Grab the fax from the machine. Easy. Is this not the office? Uh, okay, that was the mechanic station. Oh, there's fact. I know what this looks like. When I was younger, I used to. Oh, why am I opening the printer for scanner? This must be it. When I was younger, I used to call in and dedicate songs to my local radio radio station to boys I had crushes on. And uh, I kid you not, that it took like two hours for the song to play. But that is a uh, core memory. Okay. Um. Stairs, kitchen, extension two. Okay, okay, this seems simple enough. Just tells me where the phones are. <laughs> run, forest, run. Oh, yeah, he is forest, huh? <laughs> Alright, let's do this shit. <clears throat> hey, did you get the fax? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. I lost it. Mr. Russell? I should have said I lost you, it. Uh, oh, no. You still with us? I am. Get my facts. Save everybody, though. Yeah, I got it right here. How could I have lost Good. it? I knew you could at least manage that. Okay, folks, we're back on the line with Maurice. Let's see if we can help him avoid the whistling man. Here's the situation the whistling man searched every room in the hall leading up to the boardroom. And now he's in the office next door. It's now or never. This plan of yours better work. I'm ready on my end, Forrest. What are you? Again, we want to draw the killer away by dialing an extension number. And then move Maurice somewhere safe. So, 
What extension should I call? I'm super confused. Call the editor's office. Uh, I guess. Where the fuck is he? Wait, where is he? He said he's in the office. He's in the boardroom. Is the kitchen? Call the kitchen. The extension is zero two. Got it. He's in the boardroom. I'll put the okay. call through when you're ready. All right, I'd be so Ash. fucked if I actually call the boardroom. Where do I need to go? Okay, go to... He's going to the kitchen, so I go to the editor's room. Uh, go to the kitchen, go to the archives. What the fuck? Oh wait, hold on a second. What? Uh, on second thought, let's dial another room. Let's dial another... Boy! We're wasting time! Hold on. He's right, Forrest. I can get another number ready. But we probably won't get to change our minds again. Okay. Where do you want me to call? I think he should go. Let's call the editor's office. Call the editor's I'm office. The extension is 03. Got it. I'll put the call through when you're kitchen. ready. All right, Nash. Where do I need to go? Old man's in the boardroom. Okay. Um Wait, what the fuck? Okay. Uh yeah, go to the kitchen. You're moving to the kitchen. Yeah. That makes sense. Go somewhere he's already checked. Not bad, Nash. Then I'll call the board. I'm ready to place the call. Leave. Are you ready, Mr. Russell? Don't have much choice. Think he's just gonna I? go in because the phone's ringing. That seems Make silly. Make the call. Yes, sir. Calling. I might fuck this now. one up, but that's okay. I'm okay. I can't believe it. He's actually heading to my office. It was all Peggy's idea. Credit goes to her. Watch him die. Ah, uh, don't mention it. The coast is clear. I'm shutting off the TV so he won't see me on the security cameras. Then, making my move, I'll call when I get there. This is crazy. Do you think he'll make it okay? No. I'm sure he'll be fine. No. He's gonna but now die. What do we, do? we gotta find some way for him to get past that barricade. What do you mean? I don't think calling the whistling man is gonna buy Maurice enough time to move those cabinets. We gotta think of something else. Yeah. Maybe we could... Oh! Call incoming. You ready? I already forgot about the cabinets. Ready as I'll ever, ready be. As I'll ever be. I put him through. Alrighty. Mr. Russell, are you there? I am. I don't think he saw me. Oh man. Okay, so he's I in the kitchen. I gotta give you credit for that. But I'm not out of the woods yet. Uh, right. Let's review where we are. So, the, so right the only way out is by the stairs, which the whistling man has blocked with furniture. Yes. Exactly. Uh, I can move the furniture out of the way. But not quickly or quietly. Maybe play dead. Can you fight him? Can you lock him in a room? Could you lock him in a room? That'd probably buy you time enough, right? Maybe. But the damn fire regulation say every door in the office has to unlock from the inside. Oh. He'd be able to get out just as soon as... Wait. Wait, wait, no. No, no, no. I got it. The secret archive through my office. Where we keep our most sensitive records. Ooh, a secret archive? Reggie would love that. Who's Reggie? What have you got back there? Juicy secrets about outer space? Huh. <laughs> I didn't know you were into conspiracies, Peggy. I may have borrowed a few tapes from our manager's office. He has quite the collection. This is bad timing. Will you two chatterboxes pipe down? I've got it all figured out. The secret archive. There's no lock on the inside of that room. Only the outside. How do you get him in there? You can't break out. If we can get him in there, and I lock him in... But how? We can catch the son of a gun. Exactly. Oh my god, Forrest, we might be able to end he? the nightmare right here. So should I call the secret archive then? You can't. The archive is a room for secrets, not gossip. So we don't have a phone in there. Oh, we're gonna need to change it up then. Where did he see Any this? ideas, Forrest? Uh, use yourself as bait, use a radio. Use a radio! Maybe we could use a radio. There's no radio in the secret archives. Are there no radios at your offices? I don't have one in my office, but... What is it? Our sports reporter, Hopkins. He has a little portable radio he never turns off when he's here. 
I hope he's a great. I'm glad you got a radio fan there. Does he listen to 189.16, The Scream? I meant because I could... Gallows Creek's best <laughs> and only late-night call-in show. My secret archive Jesus would include Ash. my collection of thousands I'd of... I'd expect that level beans. of self-appetizement from Brian Ponty, not you. Don't be a Ponty, Forrest. That's low. Will you idiots focus now? His portable radio should still be here. What is it, too? It should be in the archives, actually. I'll sneak over while our friend is still distracted with his search. Is he not in the editor's room? I'll call you back once I've got the radio. That doesn't make any sense. That's, he's in there, isn't he? We're gonna save him No, first. we're not! Heck, if this works, we might even save the whole town! What the fuck? He just... Don't get excited There's still yet. a lot to do before we celebrate. Wait. Let's just see how it goes first. I'm so confused. Is what he do you mean? Going in the he's room? not out of there yet. That, we still gotta the find the radio, in? unblock the stairs. I know, but we've got a plan for how to do that. And, oh, call incoming from the reporter. Putting it through now. Nash, hello? Nash, are you there? Yes. I'm here. Is everything okay? I found the radio. It's right where I thought it would be. It's all coming together. I'm just gonna turn it on quickly, make sure it's still got some juice. He's dead. Maurice, turn the volume down. We don't want that thing blasting just yet. Yeah, yeah, I knew that, Nash. I was just doing that when you yelled at me. It doesn't want me to step away. I want to go look at the map, because I'm trying to figure out where he's at. Your works! If I make it out alive, Hopkins might just get that day off he wanted. Eh, he's earned it. Let's do it for Hopkins, Forrest. Let's do it for Hopkins, yeah! Wait. Ah, oh, god damn it. If I can't have this stupid thing turned up, how am I supposed to draw the killer? I can't be in the room when it's on, or I'm dead! Turn it to our you station. Just... Oh, that's a good point. Give but wait! We're the radio! We can just be quiet until you're ready! If you can do that, then... Yeah, sure! 189.16. Now, even when I know something for a fact, I like to double check. Well, let me turn this down. But after your earlier self advertisement, Nash, I don't think that's necessary. I've got the radio on silent, but I'm tuned in. Now, I just need to get to my office. Sounds like we need to make another call, Forrest. Where should we send the killer? Uh. He is trying to go to his office. Right there. I thought I have no fucking clue. Um, let's call him to the archives, I guess. Or the kitchen. Call the kitchen. The extension is zero two. That could work. I'm gonna. The fuck kitchen this up. is far away from the editor's office, but the killer searched it before. Are you sure? Oh no. Uh. Let me have a think again. Uh, call the archives. Call the archives. The extension is zero one. The I'm in the archives. Keep your head on, oh, man. Oh wait, I thought he was gonna in the cut off archives. My... What the fuck? I'm so confused. Call the boardroom. Okay, call the boardroom. Call the boardroom. The extension is zero four. That might work. The boardroom is fairly close to the editor's office. What do you want to me? But Those are all the seen options. The killer go there yet? Are you sure? I mean, he's in the. It doesn't make. Yeah, make the I'm call. I'm sure. Make the call. Okay, calling the boardroom. <laughs> I'm getting now. frustrated with them second guessing my decisions. I'm glad- well, because it made it seem like he was in the secret archives, which is why I was really confused. So now he has to go from the border, which is right there. He's on the move! I'll call you guys from my office in a second! <laughs> I'm getting back. Looks like we're almost through this nightmare. Any idea what you'll say to draw the killer in? Maybe I'll start willing. Whistling. I'm gonna do my best impersonation of Maurice. I think that'll draw the killer in. What's your Mr. Russell impression? I think I gave that mask freak to slip. What a great plan this is, Pearl. Uh, I'll give that you an That sounded exact. It's the same. Effort. Ooh, call it's coming the same in. Voice. Here we go. I'm here. The radio's set up in the secret archive. Just give me the signal, and I'll turn it all the way up. Where will you hide in the meantime? I. Uh, good question. It's under my desk, but uh, you can see under it. I've got a big cabinet, but uh, that'll take me a second to get into. Anywhere else? Uh, not really. 
There's the secret archive itself, but that's where the kill is going. I'd say the cabinet. I could try the cubicles, but they're pretty far away. Your judgment has kept me alive so far, <laughs> Nash. <laughs> so much pressure. What do you reckon? I say cabinet. I have the secret archive. Why is that a fucking option? Hide in your cabinet. All right. It might well, take a second. This is it. I'm going to go turn the radio up to full blast now. Don't say anything until I've had time to hide. You got it? We know the plan. You can trust us. I can't Here we go. I think it should be safe now, Forrest. That's it! No more hiding! I'm a tough old man! I've been on the beat longer than you've been alive! Come on down, whistling man! Why did they give me the option to fuck it up? Sandwich. These nuts! Come get these nuts! This is fun. <laughs> Listeners, this is Forrest Nash of 189.16, The Scream. And if you've just tuned in, We've just locked up the Whistling Man. Sounds like Jerry Forrest, from you Rick and Morty. Beautiful bastard! <laughs> I can't believe that actually right, worked! Get the fuck out of there. If I'm being honest, I can't believe it either. Thank God it's over. I'll be off now. Gotta get out of here. Write up a few notes. Call a few friends. I'd feel safer waiting for the cops to come grab this freak with some company. Yay! Hey, maybe you and me could do an interview tomorrow for the Gallows Reporter. I'll think about it. I'll see what tomorrow brings. Get the fuck out of there. That as Why are you still talking to me? Talk to you soon. Idiot. There we are, folks. Where is the room? The whistling man is locked up. Let's all take it. He was over breath. here earlier. And play some right. killer tunes. It's David Scopo with Moonlight. A reporter. So he's right Looks here. Looks like so the night should be pretty easy from here on out. Right? Thank God that's over. I guess we got some downtime now. I could ask you some questions to kill the time. Don't You're talk gonna to interview me. Here. You sure about that? You're not so scary. What the Besides, heck? we've been working together like a week now. And you're still all shrouded in mystery. Oh my god. No. No, I don't want to use this thing. What do you want to know? Alright, shoot. What do you want to know? Question one. Nice shot. That was like a hundred. Tell me about your out of family. What? Come on, Peggy. That, the that's police too are general. Dead. Okay. It's a Did small town. Did anyone move with you to Gallows Creek? No, Peggy. Jill. Nope. Now that's too specific. Too specific? I... Do you have any... Yeah, my dick, Peggy. Siblings? I don't. I'm an only child, and my folks are dead. Oh, I'm sorry, Forrest. She's just, uh... hurting real bad for... Forrest. Uh. Oh, it's okay, Peggy. That's how it goes. Anyway. Pew. What about you? Any siblings? Your mom and pop still around? I thought I was asking the questions. You were. I'm just making conversation now. Oh. Well, There's a, my folks that? went the same way as yours. Okay. Oh. Oh. Yeah. My dad walked out when I was about 13. He'd been a wreck for a while. Ooh. Then he got himself into a wreck, and, oh, well, man. that was dad. Mom didn't take it well. She remarried pretty quick after that. She wanted to forget Dad so bad, she even made me take my stepdad's last name. You. So I I'm Peggy name. Weaver now. Anyway, Mr. Weaver got sick one day, and my mom didn't last long after he went. I'm sorry to hear that, Peg. Don't call me Peg. Yeah, Peg sorry. Leg. I was just 
trying to be big loop. It's okay. I, I know. I kill impersonation. I'm sorry. I try. I'm defensive about. You guys that think thing. Peggy sucks because she's behind? She's behind this Any frosted siblings? glass. That's funny. All. You mention that now. No, I can't. Judge. Not anymore. She looks kind of like she's got a face, but I haven't seen her since before my dad. Just Hold on. That. Someone just rang the door buzzer. Oh hell! What on the earth fuck could no. someone want at this hour? I don't know. Do you want to go check it out? No. Me? You sure you don't want to go? I can't leave the booth while we're on air. One of Reggie's KFAM regulations. No. I'll pass you the key to the stairs. No! This is stupid. Why are they being dumb? <laughs> Maybe her dad is the killer. <laughs> Did you pass Okay. Me Down to the first floor, then check the door. This is fucking stupid. We both know that there's a killer on the loose. That's the whole point of what's going on. These are flies. So, this way is this way. Oh. Uh, I don't like this. Wow, okay. I'm not getting in there tonight. Wait, where is it? Uh, I think it might be the middle. This is really dumb. A tape. Oh, sick. This looks super cool. What is this? From below, it came. On the first night of filming, I screamed so loud that somebody called the local police. I gave them an autograph and continued the shoot. It was so crazy. I'm just trying to see if I might oops need this stuff later. Craft and work. The art of decorating with okay. And this is music related. Boo! Don't need any of that. Another coffee maker. I think so. This is a uh, heart dream. Is that what it says? Oh, neon dream. It's like a fashion magazine. Oh. Barb, I don't know how to say this, but I think we should see other people. I hope we could still be friends, though, Brad. P.S. You owe me five bucks for the festival tickets. What? Funniest thing in the game so far. Oh, and it's pictures of the de developer's cats. I'm assuming. That's usually. Alright, well, let's go pick up this tape. I need a key to get in there. Why? What's in there? Looks like garbage. Um, any other notes? Bones. Alright, well, let's take this tape and see what's on it. I didn't want Peggy to check the door either. I just wanted us to both not check the door. Play on air. It says play me. Of course, doesn't know how to read. Apparently. Play me on air. The tape is talking, guys. Well, here's our ad segment, I guess. I have a call. Who was there? Oh, just I didn't Kate's see fate. who it was. <laughs> Are they still out there? No. They left as soon as I went down there. They pushed a cassette through the door. It says, play me on air. All right. Well, turn the music off and play it. Yes, ma'am. Hello, Gallows Creek. Time to pay the price. Time to. Four, nine, time to sit there. I will punish you. I'm going to enjoy this. I did not enjoy that. What the hell was that? Up anymore for some reason. I. Oh, Forrest, we're still on air. Wow, that Say was something. creepy, guys. Folks, the. Oh. <clears throat> Folks, the tape you just heard was 
pass through our door only moments ago. I don't know how or why that came through our door with the killer locked up, but be careful, Gallows Creek. Stay home and stay safe. Give us a call if you need help. You can get us on 911. Ew, I did not like that. <laughs> that was so fun. Oh my gosh, time passed again. Hey, we had a call come in. Music isn't playing. Is it just fucking dead air still? Collar, you're on 189.16, The Scream, with... Ash! Shut up and listen to me! Mr. Russell? What's wrong? Oh, shit. Are you okay? I said listen! He's gone! The whistling man Where's is he gone! Been? Where's he been? He's gone. So he... So the one who left the cassette... He really did escape. You mean you knew he escaped? And you didn't tell me? We only just found out. We weren't even sure it was him. Mr. Russell, where are you now? What happened? How does he know he's well, after our call, I cleared the stairs and went home. I phoned some buddies, and we came back here to keep watch. Then what happened? I'm getting to that. We came back here. God, what a dickhead. The door was shut, just as I left it. We had a couple of drinks, and, well, there was a bunch of us, and we were all armed. We shot each other. <laughs> they thought we could teach the freak a lesson before the cops got him. Oh no. Did you let him escape? Of course we didn't. I demand <laughs> you retract that accusation. This is Damn it, so Maurice. Dumb. Just tell me what happened with this plan of yours. This was not my idea. The guys just grabbed their weapons and unlocked the door. I braced myself and. Then? Then nothing. The room was empty. The door was still locked. How the hell did he get out? Are you sure it was still locked? I'm telling you, it was locked. No way out of there. None. Maybe. I mean, I know it's crazy, but if he's back from the dead, then... Do you think he's some kind of ghost? Do you think ghost? he's some kind of ghost, Peggy? It would explain things. I mean, how do we know he's not? There's no way. He's a zombie. Oh, did you say something, Maurice? Baloney. I said baloney. Look, I don't want anything more to do with this. I'm clearing he's, out a dodge. He's like Jason. He and just I comes recommend from the dead. you and everyone listening do the same. Even from he space. seems really spooked. Jason's Wouldn't you be space, if you right? got attacked by a serial killer who turned out to be a demonic spirit? <sighs> he's not a demon, Peggy. Yeah, you're probably right. But what do we do now? Um, run away. Let's say I call the cops when we get her online. Oh my god. Thank Jeep, you again, Mrs. Mrs. McKenzie, for the helpful tip. The bagger at the grocery store cannot whistle. We'll remove her from the suspect list. Let's go to a break. I need you for a second. All right, folks. We need to take a quick break. This one's for all those folks out there keeping the hatches battened. Okay, uh, let's do this one. Time to go on the journey that is Blast Processor with their hit song, 1980X. All right, Peggy, what's up? I pushed a cassette under my door. Go play it. Oh, More cassettes. Is it an ad? Oh. Shit, I missed it. They tell me to... Whoa, was this always here? Am I crazy? I don't remember that being here. They tell me to do things, and then I go to do them, and they're like, more dialogue, please. I know we just gave you a command, but... Off. I don't know if I'm playing this live. Or try your call again. Ugh, straight to voicemail? My god. Are there any professionals at KFAM? This is Gina Franklin. I'm calling because your backwater station has not honored our agreement. We gave die. you Mr. Snatcher's newest single, the kind of honor you never had and probably never will again. And we've still not received any information about when you're fitting it into your 
busy programming. I'll be frank, I didn't want you as part of this debut, but Mr. Snatcher, due to his prior friendship with Mr. Nash... Prior and current friendship, Gina. Forrest, Nate, you alright? Don't worry about Gina, you know how she is. But yeah, can't wait for you to hear the new single, man. I think Final Breath is my best work yet. I really hope you and your listeners like it. And man, if you ever find your way this side of the pond, let me know. We'll have to catch up. If Final Breath isn't played on your airwaves by the end of Mr. Nash's show tonight, the next call will be much less friendly. Did I just play that for the Snatcher, Forrest! You know, Roddy Snatcher? Yeah, it sounds like we're friends. Are you a big fan of Roddy? <gasps> I love What the fuck is happening? <laughs> I will always find you was my sauce. She is sus. <laughs> Wish we still had it in Everyone's rotation. sus. Oh, Everyone's my God. potential I killers. I can't believe you know Roddy Snatcher. And I can't believe you didn't tell me he sent you his new single. Where are my keys? We have to play Final Breath. Where is it? I don't know. They mailed it to K-Fam, not to me. Then it's got to be downstairs at reception. <sighs> Just Man, down there. I can't believe Barbara didn't say anything. I, didn't see I mean, it. well, if that fiasco last Friday about the missing knife and easy track is any indication, folks at KFAM aren't against hoarding station music for personal use. Downstairs for a jump scare. I think we're still what missing a few see? tracks, actually. Well, go get Roddy's song before Gina sues the pants off us. Sues? Okay. Uh, can I actually go this time? No dialogue box? Wow. Wow, I'm surprised. Oh. oh wait, uh, yeah, right. That's not open. Oh wait, maybe not. Just kidding. I don't know what that is. I just feel like it's weird because it says reception, but it's stairs, so I feel like it should be a stair symbol. I get that it tells you where it leads, but... What the fuck is that? Oh, the little <laughs> umbrella I picked up earlier. I saw no consent. Maze, maze, adult image. This is the prize. Data bowls. What the heck? Barbara's on a video dating service. You guys know what this is. It's like you. I, I, I'm not from a time when they use this, but uh, I mean technically I'm not. Anyways, so basically you would like send in almost like a interview of yourself, like for potential suitors. It was like a video interview. They're so awkward looking. I remember watching a horror movie that revolved around that concept, but it's, she's got like three tapes for herself. Just to hand out, I guess. I don't fucking know why she's got them. <laughs> um, super weird. I need to key. Where's my cassette, Barbara? Oh, it's this. This must be it. Final breath. My tiny selection grows. I thought it was a cassette. I didn't realize it was a record. Whoop. I don't remember. It's like a horror movie. Uh, he, it's So he ends up, he's doing like a... God, no one's gonna know what the fuck I'm talking about. It might be a movie. It might even just be like an episode from a horror series. But essentially he's like... Um, essentially he's like doing the video dating service. And he keeps submitting them. And they're like, you're not really getting... Um, any matches? No women are picking your videos. And eventually he finds like a, a virtual, it's basically like a virtual friend. You like watch the movie and interact with this person pretending to have a conversation with you. And then the person like seeps into real life. This guy seeps into real life and starts controlling like his actions and he becomes obsessed with them. It's really interesting. I don't remember what it, I don't think it's like, it feels like an episode of Black Mirror, but I don't think it is. I will update you guys if I remember on the next live stream. Ah. <laughs> okay. Um. So where's the? No. <laughs> Shut your mouth. Here you go. Hey, did you get it? Yes. Got it. Let's get this on the air. Ah! I think it might be Black Mirror. Gallows Maybe it's Creek. An of Black I'm Mirror. pleased to say we're in for a much needed treat. It's like retro tech. Up though, next, so I didn't know courtesy was... of the British sensation himself, Altered is a track carbon? you won't hear everywhere. Here's that Final Electric Breath Dreams? by Roddy that Snatcher. One? Maybe? That might be it. It's like the same concept as Black Mirror. Wow. God, Roddy's the best. He is. 
And more importantly, we should be safe from the worst of Gina Franklin. Electric Dreams, I think is what it's called. And I think that's it's like every an Amazon time I've seen him live. Based on a book, Peggy, I'm you just sure. talked through the whole song. But it's like the oh, same concept. Whoops. It's like a series of it's stories. It's okay. I can just play it on loop later. Oh, shoot. Oops, I just noticed we have a caller waiting. I really it. hope it's nothing serious. I'm busy watching the Fallout series, which I really enjoy. I was not expecting to. Am I supposed to do something? We have a call waiting. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Sorry, Peg. Sorry, Peg Leg. I started talking Evening, about Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash, Jibar. host of 189.16. The scream. And tonight's 911 stand in. This is Murphy! <laughs> Hello, Murphy. Uh, what have you got for us tonight? Two things, Forrest. First, happy birthday to my son, Fernando. He's free today. And man, being his daddy has changed my life. I've learned how to live, how to laugh. Most importantly, how to love. How to love. Aw, happy birthday, Fernando. Weird night to celebrate, but happy birthday, Fernando. Happy birthday, Fernando. Thanks. And now, my other thing. I'm putting the word out to this so called killer. You think you're tough, huh? Big man with a big knife, huh? huh? Ruben, come face me, a true warrior. At the gallows waste disposal plant. Guess what? What? This is a bad idea. This is a bad idea, Murphy. I got all the tapes. Oh, way over there. Master Robbins Dojo series. So oh no. Ready. Whistling man. I wonder if the tape I picked had an effect on who calls. Jump your dog. Is he quoted <laughs> the crack window or whatever? Oh no. <sighs> and what is G there he goes. Ladies and gentlemen, keep your fingers crossed for Murphy as he tries to become our hometown hero. Although, having heard that Master Robbie ad earlier, uh, is it well, my fault? Don't get your hopes up too much. Is it my fault? Did I do this? Anyway, we'll be right back after this commercial. Okay, uh, let's do the American Bible. Oh, that's right. That was the really shitty voice. Teddy Gallows Jr. is a family man, a devout Christian, and a proud it's patriot. Teddy Gallows Jr. is Gallows Creek. Like his father and all his fathers before him, Teddy Gallows Jr. has worked hard to create jobs, improve infrastructure, and make Gallows Creek a good place to raise a family. Unlike current mayor, Linda Cartwright, Teddy Gallows Jr. lives in Gallows Creek. He's our neighbor, and he stands with our neighbors. Like Sheriff Matthews, who, after years of keeping the peace, Mayor Cartwright is trying to force into early retirement. Teddy Gallows Jr. doesn't believe in keeping a good man out of a job. Teddy Gallows Jr. believes in the American dream. Does Linda Cartwright? Help Teddy Gallows Jr. keep Gallows Creek a good American town. Help him become mayor. Take a swing for Gallows Creek. Vote for Teddy Gallows Jr. My name is Teddy Gallows Jr. And I approve this message. God, what a jackass. 100% grade A asshole. Melinda Cartwright isn't super herself, but she's not... Yeah, we don't have any more of those ads to air tonight, do we? No, just the one. Good. I have to ask, though. Take a swing for Gallows Creek? Uh, he set the home run record for Gallows Creek High. Uh, it sounded like a he's golf he's one of those again. guys. Yep, he baseball? played lots of sports back in the day, and he never lets anyone forget it. Right. Let's just get back to the show. Well, folks, hearing that reminds me that every vote matters. That ad really made me want to take a swing at Teddy Gallows. Oh my god. You mean take a swing for Teddy Gallows? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Let's find out from our next caller who's got their vote. We got a caller. You know what to do. 
Hey. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. <sighs> Hello? Who is this? Oh, she's not scared. Are you okay? Do you need help? Forrest? He called me? That horrible whistling down the phone. He's coming for me? What the fuck is this? Jesus. Okay, listen, Collar. Don't panic. We've done this a few times now. We can help you. A few times? Already? So, you saved them, or... We sure did. You're in safe hands. I can only say that because I did. Okay. Okay. What if We're I let them both you. die? Can you tell me your well, name, Carla? No. I'm Dr. Sullivan of Virginia. Sorry. Take some deep breaths, Virginia. You're going to be okay. Please don't let okay, me die. Be I won't. Stream. <laughs> Just calm down. I can't. Tell me where you are right now. What's your address? I'm... I'm... Oh, shit. Maybe you can hide in your house? He'll find me. I know he'll find me. Okay. Uh, can you run out back? No. What if he's outside? Waiting for me? Oh, God. Is there a neighbor you can call for help? No. Everyone's away tonight. I have nothing. There's just a fraternity down the street. street. You live by a frat house? Yes. They're having a party. That takeout coming in all night. Fun. Maybe he'll go there. They're getting wasted, and I'm about to get toasted. Oh God! Virginia, what's the name of the frat? It's. Oh God! I can't think. I, I can't. Any idea what the frat might be, Peggy? If I knew where she was, I might know. But where are you? Wait, the takeout. If we can get takeout to the frat, we can get a message to them to go and help. What Virginia, job? who did they order takeout from? I don't know. Uh, try to remember. Come on, Virginia. Try to remember. I can't do this! Oh, fuck. Well, folks, seems like our Virginia hung up. While we try to figure out what takeout to order, here's some music for your own midnight snacks. I want takeout. There's, like, no good Chinese food restaurants where I live. I know him. You love him. This is Roddy Snatcher with his new single, Final Please. Breath. Grilling spree. Peggy, what places do take out in Gallows Creek? Off the top of my head? Uh, well... There's the barbecue place, Grilling Spree. Yeah, I see And that. you can order from Chalupa Cabras. Chalupa Cabras? Oh, and of course what we the have fuck? Monty's Pizza. Chalupa That's means it, boat. I wouldn't think pizza. Let's get calling. All right. We'll call each place and ask who they deliver to tonight. That's not going to work. Take out client privilege. What the fuck? That's not what? Okay. There was a lot of competition back in the day. Things got ugly. It's a long story. That's but what we can thing. do is this. We figure out where the frat boys ordered from, call the takeout pretending to be from the frat, place an order, and include a note asking them to call the station. <sighs> There's no other way, is there? Not Yay. that I can see. Uh, better get going. Well, let's not waste any time then. That's the spirit. How am I you got to any suggestions on where to look? Check the offices for anything food related. And maybe the kitchen downstairs. What the fuck? You'll need a key for that. I'll just slide it under my door now. Thanks, Peggy. Authentic Chinese food. I, you know what they, if you like uh, boba, you know what Trader Joe's where you live off? That is what like would my make favorite. me order from somewhere if I were a partying frat boy? That's my favorite grocery store. We have store a food critic, right? Minute. Chad Even or Brad day. or... Uh... But they have boba. <sighs> I just have to look around. And we're just going to look around. We're going to look out for takeout boxes. I think I saw something here. Seems like a really bad way to figure it out, but whatever. Music is messing. Menacing. Go Gallows High, I guess. their coffee. Uh, what the fuck is this? Grilling spree. I better see what's on this tape. 
That's so weird. Is this not an ad? This looks like an ad. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm trying to get them to put in a- I want them to put- I'm trying to get them. I want them to put in a Trader Joe's, uh, a grocery store just close by my house, and I hope they replace it with Trader Joe's. That's this neighborhood is get them. I want them to zhuzh it up a little. They're putting in food carts, but, um, uh, That stays up. This stays down. I don't know why it's like limiting my volume. Hey, hey, hey. great party, man. <laughs> Thanks. Can I grab another beer? Hey, sure thing. Let me grab you one out of the fridge. Oh no, we're out of beer. What am I gonna do? The party is going to be over. Fear not! A grilling spree will give you a free six-pack of beer if Dallas High wins this Tuesday. Say what? That's right. Order a meal deal from us and you'll get a free six-pack of beer if Dallas High wins. A free six-pack? It's righteous! You heard me. Six beers if Dallas High wins. Sounds like you've already had enough beers. <laughs> I hope we <laughs> murder them. <laughs> <laughs> me too, Billy. Me too. Come on down to Grilling Spree or call up 555-749-8335. We've got barbecue you'll die for. Everything in this town is scary, like base. A free six pack, huh? Yeah. <laughs> hey Forrest, do you know what the Grill Reaper's favorite grilling spree order is? I have a feeling you're gonna tell me. Spare ribs. Christ. That's dumb. All right, so. Hey, find anything useful? Uh, I'll go and look again. I mean, I feel All like right. I'm... Don't take too long. Virginia needs our help. All right, stop talking. I mean, the high school won. That's what it said. If Gallows High wins, get a free six-pack. And if I was uh, a fraternity, that's what Gallo High... Wait. What does it say? GC. GC High wins the big game. Yeah, so I think we're calling the grill. We're, we're calling the grill. No, stop it. We're calling the grill. Yeah, what are the menacing lights? Is it red the whole time? I just don't know this one. Okay, I know what we're doing. Hey, find anything useful? Yes. Yes, I have. That's great! Are you ready to get back on the line? Yeah. Let's make the call. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Uh, okay. Okay, Forrest, what'll it be? Call Grilling Spree. Call Grilling Spree. Okay. I'm playing a fraternity. The Grill kid. Reaper is on the line. Okay. You're through the grilling spree. We've got barbecue you'll die for. Hey, dude. What's going on? Uh, can I just have your order? I want ribs. Big ribs. For my frat house, brothers. Right. And where'd you want that delivered? Uh, same place as before, you know. The frat house. Same address? All right. We'll get it to you soon. Oh, and, and one more thing. Can you add a note to the order that says to call KFAM? A note? Okay. You better tip for this. <laughs> and now we wait. I feel confident. Agreed. This one goes out to our delivery workers. Oh, I never... Uh, oh, stab. Oh, wait. This one. It's so hard to pick them. Uh, okay. I need to throw this. Play that baloney. Let Storm Riders take you on a rock and roll ride with the Glam Jam. No, I didn't get to throw it. I pressed the wrong button. No. Hopefully, I made the right, right call. It feels right. Which I feel pretty good about it. Which of the takeout places would you order from? To save Virginia? No. Wh where would you actually eat? Oh. I mean, they're all pretty equal. If you had to pick. Sure, but if you had to pick oh. one. 
Ponty. All right, all right. Not Ponty. He's not Ponty. Yeah, sounds really right. Really. So between grilling spree and chalupa covers. I mean, I'm it depends. Record at her next time. Do I want a plate full of meat, or do I want really, really good nachos? That's it can change good. depending on the day, you know. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, maybe I. Hold that thought, Forrest. They're We've got a call rushing hard. I hate turning the music off like that so abruptly. All right, caller. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. <laughs> Hi, Alex. <laughs> uh, this is Dudley from the Brotherly Fraternity of Engineers. Uh, I have a note to call you. Hey, oh, no. weird question. Uh, but you aren't the only ones on your street tonight, are you? No, sir. Uh, I think everyone on the street is in tonight. Uh, yeppers. Oh, uh, I just visually confirmed people. it. Uh, I see cars in the driveways, and a couple of lights on, uh, everyone's in, yeah. Oh, and you've oh, no. not been throwing a loud party She's dead! Night, have you? <laughs> I certainly hope we haven't disturbed our neighbors. Uh, why do you ask, sir? Forrest, we have a new call coming oh, in. Oh no, our first death, oh no. Forrest, oh, no. mine too. Oh no! Hello. You're live on 189.16, The Stream. Forrest, it's the whistling man. He's at the door. He's... Oh, my God. It's you, isn't it? Why are you talking about it? God, I didn't talk. What the... Dear God, poor Virginia. It was your you idea. You did your best, Forrest. <laughs> to everyone listening, I know things look bad, but please don't lose faith. Oh, we shit. will stop this whistling man. And I think Virginia may have just given us the clue we need. <sighs> what was that about Clive I didn't talk? Do you know what she meant? There's a janitor here at the station named Clive, but your guess is as good as mine. It's the same All right, guy. folks. Seems we may have a lead. Our janitors if are any of you know a suspicious a Clive, then please call in. It could save lives. In the meantime, looks like we have oh, another caller. Oh, I fucked up. I wonder who they ordered takeout from. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, yeah, Forrest I did. Nash. Did. It's great to speak with you, Forrest. As a local small business owner, oh, I find this all horrifying. A killer roaming the streets of our fair town? You're so Terrible. confident. <sighs> I hear you there. It's a scary time for everyone in Gallows Creek. West for How are you holding West up? Rest you in somewhere Virginia. safe tonight? <laughs> yes, Forrest, I am. I'm here at work in my small business. It's a safe, family friendly place. Okay. Oh, what small business do you own? Oh, well, I'm not really big on promotion, but uh, Cut the line, it's a pizza guy. Has, it's Party's Pizza! The best and only pizza place in town! Come on down and get yourself a cracking deal on our two for one. God damn it, Party, no! No free ads! <laughs> <sighs> I wonder what would have happened if we called Ponty's instead. Look, he's gone now. We already have somebody else on the line. Okay. Just take a deep breath and let's keep going. I'm fine, Evening, Peggy. caller. This is Forrest Nash, host of 189.16, The Scream. And tonight's 911 stand in. Hi. Hello? Am I on air? Sure, our caller. What's this your name? Okay. And what have you got for us tonight? Name's Eugene Stein. And I've got a heart full of love, Forrest. I'm hanging out in the middle of the maze maze. Listening to your show, looking up at the stars and waiting for her. You got a special lady coming out to see you. Yeah. Molly. Aww. We planned to get lost in the maze maze tonight. That's weird. To take our first journey together into the love labyrinth. What the fuck? That's so That's weird. why I'm calling, actually. I, I thought she'd be here an hour ago. Dish. And since I've listened all night to how cool you play it, I thought you were the perfect guy to ask. Should I call her up and ask if she's coming, or wait and see? 
For real, kid? If you've been listening all night, do you really need to ask me? Yes, that's why I'm calling. Get the fuck out of there. Eugene, you really need to go home to your parents. My parents are dead, actually. Oh, shit. But, uh, <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, drugs. I guess it's not the night. What? I've never heard that Hang before. On. What are you talking about? What drugs Some are you talking sleep. about? Huh? I guess she came after all. Molly! I'm in the middle! Oh, shit. It'll take a little while to get here, but uh, thanks again, Forrest. It's been good talking. Wait a second. Molly can't whistle. What do you mean she can't whistle? No, no! This is supposed to be the best night of my life! Not the worst! Just run through the... Eugene, do you know the way out? It wouldn't be the maze maze if he could just remember the way, Forrest. She's right! I... Listen, Eugene. Breathe. Hide. And call back in a minute. We'll get you out. Shit. Oh, I... Molly. I'll do it for Molly. My bad. But please, oh, hurry! My bad. <laughs> Oof. Well, listeners, while Peggy and I deliberate, here's a track for all you lovers out there. Okay, here's the same song from earlier, but we'll pretend like it's different. Yep. Yep. How the hell am I supposed to get him through the maze maze? You know Barbara, our receptionist? She's a maze maze fanatic. I should have a ticket. Shame she isn't here. I was supposed to go with her last week, but she changed her mind. Why'd she change her mind? She went with that jerk Brad instead. Oh, she did get a date. Does everyone have dates in the maze? Does everyone in Gallows Creek go on dates in the maze maze? A lot of folks do. There's something nice about getting lost, I guess. And besides, there's not much else to do here. Maybe we should call Barbara then? If she's so big on the maze maze. We could, but I don't actually know her number. I know her number. But she probably has Maze Maze stuff somewhere. Go and see what you can find. All That'll right. hopefully be enough. Uh, which one is Barbara again? Barbara, you know, Barbara. Uh. Forrest, I've seen you speak to her. God, help me out, Peggy. She's the receptionist. He took it Sits at reception. Oh Who are you Never with? does any work because she's talking to Brad all day. Ring any bells? Right, yeah. Sorry, I guess it's just the stress of... No excuses. Just go and find something to help us. On it. I've got it. For Molly. For Eugene, I guess. Oh, here we go. New key. Locked tight. Oh, wait. I keep forgetting that that's not the stairs. I don't know why. It just feels like it is. Mary Jane is much nicer than Molly. Definitely would not do either if I was gonna play uh, Lethal Company. Alright, let's see. Alright, Maze. Whoa. Whoa, this is not a room. This is a whole. Okay. This makes me curious about why. This just looks like a mock closet. Whoa. This place is freaking huge! Maze? Yep, what's this? I have no idea how to tell how I could have been able to tell who they ordered takeout from. It seems insane. The music on play. We're looking for maze. Maze information. Let's see. Yes, I'm gonna suggest. Alright, Oh my gosh, I can hear my neighbor's dog crying to be let in. I always feel so bad for <laughs> Looks like Brad broke her heart. I already read this, Boris. I wonder what she'd have done with all that maze maze stuff. In the trap? Bingo. Here's what I was looking for. Oh, shit. Oh, guys. Hopefully I don't fuck this one up, too. And then he... When he said he was on something illegal, I was like, Oh, no, don't tell me it's crack. What the fuck off? Who are you friends with? <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, I got this map. Oh my god. Wait, farmer hat. Okay, I feel more... At least I have information, unlike the... Uh, takeout, which I felt like I had the information, but apparently the information was wrong. I don't know. So we'll see. For this Any luck? Better. For Eugene, yes. For Barbara, no. Brad canceled the date. So Barbara left her tickets and a map for the maze maze behind. Lucky uh, us! Barbara can do better than... Never mind. Let's save the kid. Yeah. Eugene called while you were away. He's on line one. I just assume the worst. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. I hope you lovers like that track. And I hope we can help our lover in the maze maze. Eugene, you're back on air. I'm lost, Forrest. I just ran and I, I don't know where I am. I'm at a crossroad facing a tractor statue. There are hay bales painted gold on my right. So he's between one and two. He's facing a tractor statue, which is one. So he's facing one, and the hay bales are on his right. So he needs to go left. Yeah, and he needs to go to left, up, left again. Oh shit, that's a dead end. Hold on. I think he needs to go back. Where's the connecting helmet? Left. Nope, it's disconnected. Hold on, guys. Sorry, this is... Everything is disconnected. Okay, so he needs to go left. Left. Down past the tree. To the right. Oh my god. This is so long. Okay, so he needs to start by going... Go left. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, I, I went left. Then tried a right. I have a pig statue in front of me and a creepy rocking horse on my left. So he needs to go backwards. Because he's going to go down. Go backwards. Oh, God! Why didn't I just invite her over? Oh. I'm at a crossroads. There's a pitchfork statue up ahead. Which way? He needs to go back. It's only saying go left, go right, go forward. So he's looking at the pitchfork. So go left, I guess. Go left. Oh, this must cut tonight. This meant to go. I just wanted some love. So you should come up on the farmer's hat and the scarecrow. Uh, there's a tiny barn in front of me and a scarecrow behind me. Nothing to my sides. So. Okay, so he's right between eight and seven. He said, barns behind him, scare ho, scare ho. <laughs> no, uh, barn in front, scare ho behind. So he's facing eight. So he needs to go right. Go right. Can't run much more. I just passed a cord and silo. Just nine. Didn't see anything else. I just passed nine. Please. He went up there and around. Where do I go? Okay, and then towards four. Oh gosh, I don't know how far back you are, Alex. He just passed a corn silo and can't see anything else. Just pass So forward, right, left. He doesn't need to go. So he just passes. So I guess go 
right? This is... He just passed a corn silo and didn't see anything else on the way. So he just went past nine. So if he's facing down, I mean, if he has right as an option, it's gotta be right. Go right. <laughs> yeah! One less dead person. That's what I want. Oh, thank you, Forrest. I, I love you, Molly. Oh, Molly, she stood you up. That was tense. I think I held my breath the whole time. Same. I think it went pretty well, all told. <laughs> I think you're right. By the way, why do you think Molly missed their date? Probably do you she think she's did. okay? Unfortunately for Eugene, I think she probably never left home. Wow, that was a really harsh pig. All right, I'm gonna take a little break. I'll be right back. And thank you. Ah, we'll see you guys in a minute.
All right. Hmm. I don't know why. For calling in, Mr. Walton. Sorry, guys. I'm just trying to make sure it's coming up. <laughs> Um. We'll make okay. sure to add the town librarian to our list of obvious. suspicious Clives. Remember, Welcome report back, a Clive to stay alive. Next caller is up, Forrest, so take it away. All right, you say Caller, you're through to Forrest Nash on 189.16, The Scream. Hey, this game is five hours long. Wonderful show tonight, tonight Forrest. Forrest. Well, that's kind of you to say. Thank you. What's your name, caller? Uh, you can call me Don. Could you play my tune, Forrest? Your so tune? Sad. Sure. Long Ride Home. That old song. Sure. We got it. Do I we? think I played it the other day. Thanks. It'll be good to hear it again. All right, folks. Coming up is that old classic. Uh, Forrest, I don't think you're going to find that song. What do you mean? What? I played it a few nights ago. I know, but, uh, we don't have it anymore. What are you talking about? I threw it away. You threw it in the trash? No, I... Uh, I threw it out the window oh, earlier today. No. Why? Uh, and why did you throw it out the window earlier today? Way Brad was annoying me all afternoon. <laughs> what? He played it on repeat because he knows I don't like it. So, I grabbed it and threw it right out of one of the office windows. Not my finest hour, but I can only take so much. So... For shame, Peggy. For shame, Peggy. For shame. I know. <laughs> Let's just play a different song. We've got more important things to think about anyway. Gotcha. Okay, folks, here comes some unrequested music. Sorry about that, Dawn. Maybe try again tomorrow night. Sorry. Moonlight by David Scopel? You're gonna love this next track. This is awkward. What do I do? Of all the songs to request, why did it have to be that one? Gee, Peggy, what did the barn finds ever do to you? Wrote that song, for one. It gets real old when you're forced to listen to it on repeat for years. <sighs> Why couldn't they just request Roddy? Oh, Forrest, scrap the song. We have another caller. Oh my gosh. Not everyone likes what you like, Peggy. Sorry to cut the music short, folks. Callers take priority tonight. Welcome to 189.16, The Scream. This is Forrest Nat. Alien vs. Predator. <laughs> Forrest! Oh, thank God. It's me again. Murphy. Are you at the waste treatment center still? What's wrong? Talk to me, Murphy. What's wrong? Oh, the killer got me, man. I... Uh, why did I ever trust a guy named Master Robin? I warned you not to... Hindsight is twenty twenty. okay? <laughs> Forrest, we need to do something. No, we don't. He God asked for this. He came to the gallows waste to Because you told him to. Beat on me, man. Carry me inside and lock me in a dumpster. That's weird. I got a flashlight, but... Oh. Oh, God damn. I smell smoke. I think he's starting to fire. Hold on, Murphy. We'll call for help right now. Call who? You gotta hurry, man. I need someone here now or... I'm gonna die! Shit. Peggy, get the fire department on the line. On it. All right. Now just... Come on, pick up. Hi. Yes, I'd like to report a fire over at the Gallows Waste Disposal Plant. It's an emergency. Someone is trapped. Hello? What do you mean it's not operational? Why is there no backup vehicle? Dang. This this murderer, he, he's like all over oh, town. God damn it! Of course, that kind of evil flashlight? son of a bitch slashed the tires <laughs> on the town's only fire engine. They can't do anything. 
There's only but one. I have a few friends who live nearby. Maybe one of them can save Murphy. Where do they live? My friend Alex lives on the corner of Haddonfield and Romero Street. And Catherine lives on the west end of Myers Lane. And there's Jericho on the east end of Myers Lane. But he's... Slow down, bitch. Old. Really old. Okay, I'll check the map, see who would be best to do this. Okay, uh... Whoa, are you gonna... Oh my god! I think it was this guy. This guy seems closest. It says east side Mac Reddy Street will be closed to the second and ninth. Oh, through the ninth. So Mac Mac Reddy Mac Reddy Street is closed. Okay. Rogers and Henfield. Fuck. Okay, well, I swear she said that someone lives on this corner, didn't she? Say it to me again. Alright, Forrest, who should I call? Who can help Murphy? Oh, what the fuck? What? No! Oh my god. Oh my god, this is impossible. You said it so fast, you bitch! <laughs> uh, I have no... How do I know? What the fuck? How do I... Did she say their names? This is too much pressure. <laughs> I don't remember. Where is Murphy again? Where is Murphy again? Forrest, really? He just told us he's at the Gallows Waste Disposal Plant. Okay, okay, sorry, I forgot. Oh my god, dude, I have no idea. All right, Forrest, who should I call? Who can help Murphy? Uh, who's the closest? So this person is the closest. Okay, that's annoying. Okay, it doesn't matter. Romero and Haddonfield. It says that McGrady is closed, which is this one. So it's not actually that close. So, oh, why did she say him so fast? He is getting closer to the radio station. Where is it? Uh, Ripley Records. Is that, are we Ripley Records? It must be Ripley Records. Okay, um, how do I- oh, Okay, so I know it's not the first- I'm, I'm gonna take the assumption that these are in order. So this was the person that was on the corner, which is closest, but the road is closed. So I need someone that can go down this street. So, oh, guys, I know she said it so fast. How could you say it so fast? So okay. I think Alex, maybe? Call Alex. Alex, hopefully. All right, give me a second. You live here, bitch. You should tell me. They're on the way. They'll call from the plant. Oh, God. You can direct them from there. Well, let's hope they get there in time. Oh, fuck. This is too hard. What the frick? Oh. They said the, the, the location so fast. Forrest, I'm getting a call. Are you sure you can't? What's happening, Peggy? Alex was too far away. Too slow. The plant burned down. Oh, it collapsed. No. So Murphy is... <sighs> Poor Fernando is gonna be crushed. I... Jeez. That's no way for anyone to die. Oh, no. Terrible way to go. Yeah. They said it so fucking fast. It's so Murphy, fucked. I promise we will stop this. For you and for Fernando. All Peggy, right. It's going to be our... To alive, Forrest, we have another caller. Let's not waste Fuck time. Fuck you, Peggy. You should have been taking the reins on that one, you stupid. All right, folks. Another <laughs> of our good citizens is on the line. Let's see what they have to say. She said it so fast. She's like, I know you're not from here, but let me tell you the exact locations of all of my friends as fast as possible, and then you don't get to ask again where they live. I suppose I should take this call. Shut up. Welcome to 189.16 The Scream. It was a scam. With me, your host, Forrest Nash. Forrest, Teddy Gallows Jr. here. Oh, God. 
I just want to say that my thoughts and prayers are with my Gallows Creek neighbors oh, hang on, but during fun. this awful time. Oh, it's mayoral candidate and scion of the town founders, Mr. Gallows. Are you in danger? We need to be a town of law and order. We need cops who have the tools and funding they need to keep us safe. Okay, Teddy. We... I know. You're an outsider to our little town here, Forrest. But you're really stepping up to bat for us all tonight. I just want to say thank you for Did taking a swing for Gallows That's all said. Jackass. Alright, uh, thanks, Teddy. Now, are you- Teddy, you lowlife! This is not the time to promote your damn campaign! I just want to make sure our town is safe and prosperous. That's why the Gallows Family Factory, founded by my father, Theodore C. Gallows, God rest his soul, which employs over 200... Teddy, unless you've got an emergency, I'm cutting you off. You know what? I do have a problem. A problem that's ruining our town. You know what it is? I didn't ask about a problem. I said emergency. The problem is that woman, our current mayor, Linda Cartwright. Oh, here we go. She just isn't one of us. Linda Cartwright is un-American, unstable, and- You're not better than anyone, Teddy. Just because you inherited half the town, it- Your producer sounds a little unstable, too. Don't you dare speak to me that way. Cut him off, Peggy. I can guarantee this kind of thing will not happen when I take office. The moral decay of- And that's enough of Teddy Gallows Jr. for one lifetime. I always feel disgusting after hearing him talk. Just play an ad for us? I need a minute. We'll be right back after these messages. All right, let's do this one. I guess I don't know what it is. The world famous annual Gallows Creek Harvest Festival is back. We got it all out on Giblet Field. We got the Little Miss Harvest Pageant, Princess Harvest Pageant, Harvest Queen Pageant, Cotton Candy, Corn Dogs, Cornhole, Corn on the Cob, Crokinole, Country Music, Can Jam, Jams, Jellies, Jamborees, Juggling, Roller Rickies, Roller Disco Lessons, Praying. We got baby crawling, balloon popping, balloons for sale, beard contest, horseshoes, hayride, hay toss, hey you there, safe donkeys and ponies, video. apple bobbing, firearms, fireworks, funnel cakes, fried dough, seats, bitten, sand licking, cracker cramming, and cat shop. Honestly, not the worst ad out of all of them so far, though. And fake tattoo, face painting, puppets, petting zoo, amazing maze maze, square dancing, story swapping, spelling bee, quilting bee, and sewing circle, pie eating, lawnmower racing, hot dog eating contest, flower contest, and of course our famous oh, gourd measure off. The festival is brought to you by Mayor Linda Cartwright, sponsored by Gallows and Sons Factory and dedicated to the memory of Garrett Miley, tragically taken from us last festival. I can see why it's world famous. It's a highlight around here, Forrest. Oh, I am sorry to hear that, Peggy. All right, folks, welcome back to the show. We have a note from my producer. That's right. Oh, come find me at the Harvest Festival tomorrow to grab your choice of a KFAM mug, sticker set, or poster. Let's see Obviously what our mug. next caller would choose. Caller on line one. Dude, this is so toxic, like just doing this fucking radio stuff. Well, two people have died on the line so far. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. <gasps> oh, no. <laughs> okay, focus. Uh, hello. Caller. Who is this? I need the police. I'm Forrest Nash. I, <clears throat> I'm standing in for 911 tonight. What, what's wrong? There's a guy hunting me and my friends. I, I think he's killed some of them already. Him. He's just outside. I can see him from up here. 
God damn it. She's just a kid. Can you run? Where are, where are you? Where are you? Are, are you somewhere safe? Oh my God. Oh my God. Well, stay with me, kid. Focus. I, I can't do this. Go hang up. Yes, you can. Focus. Tell me, what's your name? It's Molly. Sweetie, you can do it. What's your name? Why is it gonna help? Carrie. Good, good. Carrie, listen to me. We're gonna get you out of there, all right? Now, where are you? The old murder house. Upstairs. Oh, fuck! I'm at the end of a hall. There's, there's a bathroom, a couple bedrooms, a closet. Oh, he's coming. Where should I go? Oh, my God. Do you see this? Oh, my God. Bathroom. Say, go, to the bedroom. go to the bedroom. I wasn't listening. She's dead. Okay. She's dead, guys. She's dead by negligence. He's here. He's here. He's gonna kill me. Forrest, I don't think we can. Don't move. Okay, right what the hell is going on here? It's instructions about the last puzzle. I'm so oh, mad. Who's on the phone, Carrie? The cops? It's just a joke. Jeez. Oh my god. Wait, isn't that... <laughs> Jimmy, that wasn't funny, you sicko! Of course I called the cops, but, but some guy just answered instead. What guy? Forrest Nash. What the hell are you all doing? It's prank night, old man. We're just having fun. That's the kid. The kid who called in earlier pretending to be the whistling man. That's it. I'm out of here. You know he's really out there tonight, Jimmy, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> it's just whistling night, man. man. That little idiot. Whistling night? It's a stupid tradition. Especially stupid since that one kid died back in... <sighs> Would you take off that stupid mask if it's hard to breathe? Who's under there anyway? Is that you, Seth? Idiot! Seth is right next to you. That's, uh... Uh... Wait. Oh, no. Who, uh... Who are you? Oh, no, man! Everyone, get inside! Wait, what the fuck? Everyone, run! You two, door! This is interesting. Scott, Heather! <laughs> As long as he's out there, and we're in here, we're safe, right? You buy time, but not much. Forrest, we have to... What? Heather, I already called the cops. Forrest picked up. He's the best we're gonna so get. So awkward. <laughs> Who is with you, Carrie? My friend, we drove out to the old murder house, and... Uh, of course! The van! Who's got the keys? Jimmy had them. Oh, just got Jimmy. sliced up like one tree. We know how to hotwire a car. Okay, okay. It's gonna be okay, Carrie. Right. Right. We'll figure something out. Between all of you, there's gotta be a way to beat this. Just sit tight, okay? okay? I can't. Heather, shut up. If we do that, we're gonna get killed. Jeannie? Jeannie McPherson? Our intern Jeannie? Yes. Only one Jeannie. She's my best friend and the smartest one out of all of us. She stayed in tonight. Forrest, listen. We'll see what we can come up with and, uh... What? Scott, you're not any good it sounds at... Sounds like they have a whole party and, in this house. No, no, 
Chad, out of all of us, you're not the one to... Oh. Everything okay? No. We... Uh, we're figuring out a plan. But everyone's volunteering to do things they're just bad at. I think we can figure out what to do. But I don't think we can agree on who should do what. Oh, shit. I think you'll have to be the time. Oh, shit. Okay, okay. Or else these idiots are gonna get us killed. But I... Shut up, you... Oh, Forrest, I'll call you back. But I don't know anything about your friends. Dude, this is killing me. <gasps> these damn kids never learn. Alex lives on the corner of Haddonfield. Are you okay? <sighs> they do this kind of thing every year, Forrest. People get hurt. All right, <clears throat> folks. We're gonna work out a way to save Carrie and her friends. This next one goes out to all the trapped kids out there. Oh, fucking tasteful, dude. So tasteful. Peggy, you mentioned something about their friend working here? Mentor? Yeah, Jeannie. Seems a nice enough girl, but a bit head in the clouds, you the know? The whole town is pranking Not sure why he's so fucked. He really didn't have the office space for one. The poor thing got tucked away in a dark corner somewhere downstairs, I heard. Alright, I'll go see if I can find her desk. Hopefully she has something so we can use. Peggy said her desk is downstairs. Yeah, oh my gosh. Corner. I called Alex. Corner of Haddonfield and Romero. Yeah, I called the guy that was the closest. There's a one person I didn't want to call. Half of them at the west end of Myers Lane. Anyways, devastating. Alright, let's go find this place. Did I say it was downstairs? Man, I killed people. Mm, you guys are sussing on every single character that's not, like, the main character or someone on the phone. First it was Pig. Oh. Lock. For now. Where did they say this fucker? I'm not getting in there tonight. Okay, okay, okay. I just forgot. I was not paying attention. Jeannie is an intern. I don't know if what we're looking for has some clue about her friends. They said they stuck her in a corner or something. Might be upstairs in the office. Oh. Maybe upstairs. Oh, Jeez. Shit. They really tucked Janie away. She's by the front entrance. Calm down. Oh, she doesn't have a chair, though. That's pretty fun. Rock on. Gallows. Or life. Jimmy. And... Oh, she likes... Oh, she likes Jimmy. And Jimmy's dead. That's sad. Oh, that's so sad. That's... Alone. Camera alone. Likes horror movies. Axe me again. A oh, Axe. Axe, final deception. Good job on the new job. Jeannie, good luck. I'm so proud of you. Make lots of friends and work hard. Lots of love, Mom. I don't know why I came. Why can I pick this up? That's the real question. Bill was here. Oh, here we go. Friendship quiz. This might work.
Look at this fire extinguisher. This thing's huge. Did you guys hear that? It sounded like something fell, but I don't see anything. So many little things to work hard in a corner. She's in a bottle? What? Okay. So, most likely to peak Mount Everest, Heather. Most likely to win the award for worst poker face. So, Cynthia can't lie. Heather can climb. Most likely to end up in prison, Seth. Most likely to escape prison, Jennifer. Most likely to become an Olympic athlete, either Hot David or Heather. I'd say Heather because she can also fly Mount Everest with her. Alright, I got my shit. Alright, guys, we're, we're equipped. No more hastiness this time. What did look? What did I not look? What did I not? She's. Oh, genius. Is that what you Is that what I missed? There's more, most likely to pass their driving test without any errors. Jimmy. Jimmy was the only person on there. Whoa, 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 whoa. Most likely to win an Oscar. Lisa. Tammy. Most likely to beat everyone at go karting. Scott. Most likely to trip while running in a horror movie. Jimmy. So Heather, Scott, and Seth. David's. Okay, it's weird because like uh, it says Heather is the most likely to peak Mount Everest and become an Olympic athlete, but it also says she's the most likely to trip while running in a horror movie. But David is less likely to peak Mount Everest, but also most likely to become an Olympic athlete, and he's not likely to trip. Uh, so we definitely don't want Scott to drive, and we want Jimmy to drive. Okay, hopefully it'll let me interact with this wall. Oop. Let's do this Hey, shit. you find anything that'll help us out? Yeah, I found a friendship quiz with all these kids on it. If you think that'll help, then good enough. Right, Carrie's okay. on line one, whenever you're ready. Okay, guys, we got this. Time to turn the music off. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. We're my this is Forrest Nash. Back again with an unlucky caller on this unlucky night. Carrie, are you there? Yes, we've got a plan, but we can't agree on who should do what. You want me to be the tiebreaker? Exactly. Okay. I'm ready. What's the first step? Okay, first things first, we'll need a spotter. Someone who can keep an eye on the killer. We'll need someone on the roof. It's gonna be a hard climb. We're deciding between Heather, Kyle, and Hot David. Heather. Heather's got this. Yes, Heather. He picked you! Now please, stop talking about all your cheerleading trophies. Part two, the whistling man padlocked the gate back to the road. Before we drive out of here, we need someone to pick the lock. Okay. Seth, Jennifer, and Scott all want to do it. Okay, most likely to... Escape person is Jennifer. So I feel like Jennifer because she's most likely to end up in prison and escape prison. Who should pick the lock? Jennifer. Jesus, Jennifer, you carry a bump key? Why didn't you say so earlier? Anyway, that brings us to part three. Getting the van keys. I'll volunteer for this. I don't know Jimmy as well as you guys, so... It'll probably be easier that way. Then is part four. This is a, this plan is impressive, this plan is long, this plan is ambitious. This plan is, uh, <laughs> well, it's ambitious. Thank you. You're doing great. What's the next part? Part four, we need someone to lead the whistling man away. We need a fast runner. For this one, we're trying to decide between, who was it again? Hot David, Cynthia, and Scott. Hot David. 
Hot David. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you are. Uh, you spend a lot of time running shirtless. They really are you taking this, this very David. not seriously. Sweet. Okay, let's recap. We get the eyes on the roof. A runner distracts the killer while we grab the van keys and pick the lock on the gate. Now the tricky part. The getaway. Ooh, what's the plan there? Well, we can't all outrun the whistling man. But he thinks we're just a bunch of stupid teens. So, let's use that against him. Part 5. We trick the killer into a trap. Someone can pretend to be injured. Who would make the most believable bait? Who you got? We got Lisa, Tammy, and Cynthia. So Lisa and Tammy are both better options. And then there's a poker face for me. Do I need to use Lisa or Tammy for anything else? The other thing, it's a getaway car. Um... Who's the party? Chad. Scott. Scott. Scott is also the most likely to get in a car crash. The only thing is- oh, Jimmy's dead. <laughs> I can't use Jimmy. Win the award for worst poker face. So basically anyone but Cynthia. I just don't know if I need to use Lisa or Tammy for anything else. I don't think I do. The only other thing is the car. Which we're gonna pick Scott? I guess? I don't know. I feel like picking Scott is a bad idea because He's also the most likely to end up in a car crash and beating everyone at go-karting. Like, yeah, he's fast, but if he gets in an accident, is that good? Hi, David. Um, so, I don't know, what do you guys think? I So I'm thinking, I'm trying to figure out the car aspect before I sacrifice either Lisa or Tammy. Even though it seems like Lisa and Tammy I feel like I need to pick Lisa because Tammy's available for other options. So I'm gonna do Lisa. Oh, I do. I'm gonna do Lisa. Lisa. Whoa. You're right, Lisa. Having to smile at rude customers is perfect practice. That should take care of the killer. And then it's time to get out of here. Finally, part six. We need someone who can drive us through the woods and back to Gallows Creek alive. Through the woods. Who's our getaway driver? Should it be? Who have we got? Chad, Scott, Cynthia, oh, whatever. Forrest, you know what to do. Scott, Cynthia, or Chad. So Chad is most likely to be... Okay, I didn't even use Tammy. <laughs> I'm thinking... You don't think Lisa's gonna make it? Aw, oh, we'll see. Lisa didn't have a worse poker face, so who should drive the van? Scott, Cynthia? I don't think- I think Scott is like a red herring or whatever it's called. I feel like they're like misdirecting me with eating everyone at go-karting. So it's either Chad. Chad is the most likely to beat everyone at go-karting. And he's not- okay, I, I think Chad. Oh god damn, I can do that. Chad. Oh, perfect. Your go-karting experience will be great, Chad. Thanks, Forrest. All right. We'll just take a few seconds for ourselves, and it's go time. Hopefully I did Sounds a good, good job. Talk to you in a sec. I don't want anyone else to Good die. luck, Carrie. Or we get to hear that it actually okay. sounded like a pretty good plan. I hope so. I hope you're right. Yeah, let's hope. Oh, the kids are back already. Line one again. Awkward. I gotta listen to this whole thing. If you're just tuning in, we're coming to you live with a bunch of teens <laughs> about to flee a madman. Listener discretion is advised. Are you ready, Carrie? We're good to go, Forrest. All right, good luck. Don't die. Good luck. And Godspeed. 
You got this. Here we go, everyone. Smarter, to the roof. Go, Heather. <laughs> She's off and away. All right, Renner. Get ready. That's so awkward. Wait for the spotter's signal. Spotter says go. We ain't got time oh, for this. His face is... The keys, Carrie. You need to get the van keys. His face is lying next to him, Forrest. He got caught. Just get the keys, bitch. Oh, God. Focus. Breathe. Right. Right. The van keys. We got him. It's up. Jennifer got the gate unlocked. Hot David should be back any second. Perfect. It's working. I can't believe it's Yay, actually working. Yay, someone didn't die You're this doing time. great. Focus, you got this. We got this. Next step, trap the killer. What? All right. Wait. Get into position. Everybody oh, else. I don't remember trapping hide. the killer. I don't remember trapping the killer. Okay, performer. Like your life depends on it. Ah. Oh, there he is. Ah. He's buying it. Ah. 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 Now, pretty good. Push the bookshelf over. At first, it sounded like ass, so I was worried I messed up. Oh my god, he went through the floor. Spotter, you need to climb down now. We gotta go. Was that? It's a whistling man. Drive now. I got goosebumps. This is so serious. Let me go. Just go. Just drive. Oh my God. Save Carrie if I wanted to, I'm being honest. I mean, what could I have done differently? Carrie? <sighs> he just. He, he just stared at me. Carrie! Carrie? What is happening? Just stared at me <laughs> and walked into the woods. I don't understand. <laughs> Thank God you're okay. Can you get somewhere safe? Plan, Carrie, and it was a great plan. Don't forget, Jeannie. Don't forget Jeannie. Her friendship quiz saved the day. Told you she was the best. I need to get home. I... Breathe, Carrie. You're okay now. I'll call you when I'm somewhere safe. Talk to you then. Yay! Clap for me. Folks, that was a... That was a lot. Our thoughts go out to Jimmy's parents in this awful time. For any kids listening in, please stay inside and stay safe. And parents, hug your kids extra tight tonight. Here's a song for the girl walking home in the dark. Uh, okay. It's pretty specific.
Not so stupid teens. All teens except Jimmy survived the whistling man. I don't know what I could have done. Hey, we had a call come in. Let me see where I'm at. Two and a half hours. This game's five hours long of playtime. So I think I'll play for another 30 minutes and then I'll save the last two hours for Wednesday. So we'll do one more saving, hopefully. All right. Forrest Nash here. Listeners, we've got another caller live on 189.16, The Scream. Pretty balanced. What's on your mind, caller? Hey, Forrest. I just wanted to phone in and say that I think I speak for everyone when I say that you're providing a real service for Gallows Creek tonight. It's cool what you're doing, man. It's a pizza guy. <laughs> well, I'm just doing my job, friend. Anyway, tell me about yourself. What's your name? Are you keeping safe tonight? Yeah, man, I'm good, thanks. I'm at my roller rink trying to get everything ready for the Harvest Festival tomorrow. I had a guy from Starling Security here earlier installing the Starling 4000 system, so I'm a little behind. As for my name, my friends call me Roller Ricky, and I now consider you a friend, my man. That's weird. We're friends now, huh? Well, that's kind of you to say. Thanks. Yeah, man. Sounds like roller skating is more than just a job to you. So is this vocational? I wasn't always Roller Ricky. Once upon a time, believe it or not, I used to go by just Ricky. Yeah, back then, things were pretty rough. I used to roll with a bad crowd. Not all bad, but there was one guy. Anyway, uh, some bad stuff went More. down. I harbored a lot of guilt for a long time and turned to the bottle. I didn't really talk about it or, or even know how to talk. It's just how it was. That bottle took the best years of my life. Or so I thought. Night it's never Ricky. too late, Roller Ricky. How did you turn things around? I joined a support group. I opened up about my problems. And sharing that burden just took so much weight off. It's a long story from there, but I found Roller Disco. I learned how to have fun again, cutting loose and making shapes. Now whenever I get down, I get down. <laughs> I'm finally shapes. free from it all, man. It's important just to talk to somebody. That's the first step. Ain't that right, Max? <laughs> I miss so many times, Aww, hello, Max. <laughs> yeah, welcome to the show, Max. Max is my emotional support dog. He's a rescue dog, but I always say he's the one that rescued me. He's the best dog a guy could ask for. <laughs> of course, the first thing I did was teach him how to skate. He's better than me now, a I'm real pro. Max can skate. Yeah, man. At first they said it couldn't be done, and then they said it shouldn't be done. But Maxie loves the rink, man. Is that another train, Maxie? Maxie loves trains, man. He's even got that special how to greet them. That's it. Maxie sounds like a really special boy. Uh, Maxie appreciates all the positivity you're throwing out, my man. You know, I'm actually hosting free skating lessons tomorrow at the festival. I think it's a great opportunity to give back to the community. Man, all this talk of skating has got me itching for a boogie. Before I switch my radio off for the night, could I request a song for us? Yeah, okay. Something I can groove to, you know, something funky. It'll be me and Maxie's final boogie breakdown tonight. Then I think we'll take it down a level. Uh, I can do play? that. Thanks again for calling. You and Max, be safe now, okay? Bye, Maxie. What's up? You got funky? it, man. I feel like this Peace. one's funky. It looks well, funky. folks. This next one goes out to Roller Ricky and Max. Enjoy. Here comes one of my favorites. I really needed that call, you know. After everything, this is not yeah, funky. Yeah, I get that. He talked a bit much for my taste, but it is inspiring to hear somebody come back from the brink like that. Yeah, that, that's what I meant. <sighs> you were thinking about Max on skates, weren't you? Well, uh, would you look at that? Another caller on the line. What are the odds? Better take it. What are the odds? Okay, Forrest, shut the music oh, yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. This is Forrest Nash. How are you tonight, caller? I'm doing okay. What's oh, Gary? I made it home safe. Gary! Hey, I, I just... Wanted to thank you for doing what you could earlier. You know, even though it 
We lost Jimmy, and... His face got cut I don't know. Hey, it's okay. You were so brave earlier. You're safe now. I wanted to ask you why. Why he didn't... Why am I... Why would I why what, know? Carrie? Why did he spare me? After what he did... God, my nose is really so bad. Go. He saw you as a victim. He wanted the pranksters. He got bored. I don't know. Maybe he didn't kill you because he saw you as a victim. Maybe. But why would that stop him from killing me too? I don't... After everything he did to... I know. These stupid hazing nights have to stop. <laughs> Carrie, you did so well tonight. Stay safe and rest. Help is coming to Gallows Creek. We just need to hold on. Thanks, Peggy. Hey, uh, Forrest? Pranksters. Uh, could I request a song? Dude. Of course, Terry. What song? I don't know what Any song. song by Blast Processor. And thank you. This next one goes out to Carrie. This is funkier than the last song. You know, what Carrie just said has really got me thinking. About what? The whistling man left her alone. Why? That's good there thinking. must be a reason. When it comes to masked whistling killers, I don't think a reason is a key part of their process. Well, it's something to consider. Oh, hi, Spooky. We haven't seen you in a while. I need to take a break. If you want to stretch your legs, now's the time. Just hit the Peggy button when you want to get back on air. Okay, so I'm going to go look around. Yes. Can I get some keys, Peggy? That's not opening. Everything is locked in this place. Wait, uh, these are the birds that aren't in there. I guess I could check the bathrooms. <sighs> Tea towel. Nothing useful. Okay. All right. I'm just taking this free time. <gasps> I can go in the ladies' room? Uh, that's the same newspaper as before, some toilet paper. Uh, a toilet that I can interact with for some reason. Just random. Whoa, scream. That lamp was a person. I don't know. Oh. Why did he send this to me twice? Eh! The scanner's so bright. Okay, I'm just looking around, looking for clues. Can of use. I don't think I'm supposed to be able to read this. Not useful. More stuff. Oh, okay, here we go. Um, attention staff, please stop putting stickers on office furniture. You're lowering the resale value of everything. Very useful. Any lore? Any lore? Searching for lore. Oh, here's the map of the town. I still can't believe I fucked that one up. That was so bad. Are you all set up in your brother's old room now, Spooky? I remember you were doing that the last time you were on here. Roller Ricky's roller rink. Okay, that's interesting. I keep thinking, like, call the police, and then I realize the whole point of this game is because we can't call the police. Okay, let's go look downstairs. I'm gonna try, I just want to try setting my lesson I'm not usually like really finicky about that, but for some reason it's like super choppy. I think that's a little better. The detail in the um, map is really interesting. It looks really good. 
Alright, we already looked around here. I just feel like there's got to be a reason that they're letting me look around. Like, why else would they let me look around? This room is huge. And get up here. But I can't drink. That doesn't break. Yep, all new bed frames too. <laughs> Pretty good and supports aren't on correctly, so I kinda sink into my bed. Oh no! <laughs> is it a race car? <laughs> That's funny. That's another grandma uh, grandma's toy reference. Someone else. High grade video cassette. Out of order, my car. Midnight axe. So. Okay, I think there was a video player in the front lobby. I just have to believe that there's a reason they're having me that shit. Not. No? Is this not a video player? No. <laughs> I thought I'd be finding lore. Oh, good night, Artie. Thanks for stopping back in. Maybe this VHS is nothing. It just says broken. That doesn't even look like a VHS player either. Anyways, seven days. Right? Is it a record? Alright. I just think it's weird. Like, why would they just give me an option to take a break right in the middle? I guess they want me to look around. These were both locked. So many locked doors, so few keys. I know. That's what I'm saying, dude. And guess what? I found nothing. There's an exit. I need a key to get in there. I need a key to get outside. Okay, maybe there's nothing. Maybe I'm reading into nothing. Ooh, that's cute. Cage tiger. Oh, gauge tiger. I don't have that one. And apparently I really don't want to go outside. This is the same old before. It's so weird. Like, why did it give me the option to do this? I don't know. Maybe I need to go talk to Peggy again. Oh, hi, Roach. No worries. You missed a very terrible start to the, li the first attempt at the live stream, anyways. I don't know. I don't know. Let's go talk to Peggy. <laughs> I'm really disappointed that... I just thought that something would come up. Get going, Peggy. Alrighty, we could run another segment or it's a weird break. 
Scratch that, Forrest. We have a caller. Yeah, you missed it, Roach. It was really, really bad. It was like probably the worst I've had, I've done so far. You're through to 189.16. OBS the was not stream. being nice. What's your emergency? Hello again, Forrest. Oh, that call with the teens was awful. That one went the kids. best. Still, I'm I'm glad the girl didn't get hurt. Thanks for your concern. Are you in trouble? What's on your mind? I wanted to ask you again to play my song, Forrest. You said you were gonna play it. But you didn't. Oh, your boy. name was Dawn, right? Hi, Peggy. Yes. Oh, well remembered. My name is Dawn. And I wanted to ask you again to play my tune, Forrest. Long Ride Home? Sounds really you know, awkward. The one that Peggy said she threw outside the window? You must really love that song. If you're calling up to ask for it when you know we don't have it. Well, I, I do love it. And I don't want to argue, but you do have it. It's just outside the window. There's a serial killer on the loose. I can't just go outside hunting for a record. <laughs> I'm really sorry, Don. Is sus. But we just can't get it right now. But wasn't the whistling man just at the old murder house? That's miles from the station. It won't take you a second to grab it. Wow. Don, I'm not sure if you've heard, but there's... Something unnatural about this freak. He's he's fast. I'm not risking it. Oh, but I think you will, Forrest. Peggy, I'm I'm calling with more than a request. Oh. I know something. What's happening? I think I know who's gonna be next. What? Are you serious? Play my song, Forrest, and you'll oh. find out. Wow, extra sus. Uh, well, extra folks, sus. Here's some someone music has for you. To. I trust her. Someone has over. to. <laughs> Alright, what are we doing? Which window? Wait, what? What do you want me to do? Is she serious, Peggy? She's serious about hearing that song, that's for sure. Peggy, I mean, is she serious about... I don't know, Forrest. But we don't really have a choice, do we? Yes, we do. If she's telling the truth. Whatever. All right, I'll do it. You're a good man, Forrest. I'll slide you the key to the fire door. Uh, or W-E, wait, wait. the appropriate Our fire terminus? door has to be unlocked? Yeah, it, uh, you know, I never thought about it, but yeah. We should talk to Reggie about that later. Anyway, I'll hold the fort down while you're out. Maybe I'll even get a caller. That could be exciting. 189.16. The Scream. With me, The Scream. Peggy. Oh, fuck. I don't want to do this. This is stupid. I only get... She has all the keys in there. He found fire door, which I think is... She said she threw it at the window, so I'm assuming it's one of the ground floor. She could only be saying that because Forrest is supposed to be next. Yes, I agree. This is stupid. Also, I have a feeling once I unlock it, it's just gonna stay unlocked. This is stupid. <gasps> Whoa. She says she threw it out the window. That's where we died last time. There's fuses on the ground. Kind of weird. You know, I hope she'll be happy when I'm brutally murdered by the whistling man. Out here. In the open. Can I see that? Hello. What the heck? these fuses for I'm gonna do this now. We're fucked, guys. Earlier, they said the doors have to be unlocked from the outside for safety reason. Oh, that was a different building. I think. I think that was the building where we were dealing with the old man caller. Oh no, 820. What the heck?
says 70. They're all eight. All right. <clears throat> Which window would she have thrown it out of? Okay, well, maybe I should wait. Jesus. There's another fuse. Fuck. Where's this record? This bitch is greedy. I mean, they all look like they say A3 something. Yeah, they all say A30. Why can't I pick up this fuse? What the fuck? I don't know which window would she have gone in. Another one. These are all fucking different. <laughs> and I don't see a record anywhere. Uh, find a record in the alley so you can play for dawn. I mean, that's simple enough. I just don't see anything. Why did both of y'all arrive late? Hmm? Roach said he was driving, didn't he? I don't even know what this is for. I don't know why I chose to do it, but I'm doing it. That does not Bingo! Oh, what the fuck? What did I do? I mean, I access the station after what? Guys, what did I do? Also, where is this fucking record, Peggy? God damn, you should be the one getting it since you threw it. I mean, logically. That's terrifying. <laughs> I could probably survive that fall. What? I just fell. I just fell. Oh. Did I need to be in here? What am I doing? Looks like the janitor's closet. What did Peggy say his name was? Clyde? Whoa, what the fuck? What the hell? Peggy is not gonna believe this. Well, go see that guy. Rebecca Allen, Chuck Brody, Aunt Williams. Are these people that called in? I don't even remember. Power station trailer park. Call donations to help choke. Chuck Brody, former Gallows High Football Captain Chuck Brody, suffered a career-ending injury as a victim of the festival disaster late last year. To help him on his road to recovery, we are buying him some lottery tickets. Hopefully he gets lucky and can get back on his feet. Drop tickets in the bucket below. Festival of D Disaster. Oops. Pressing R. <laughs> Gallows Creek Harvest Festival closed early this year after tragedy stuck, struck only hours after opening. Um, from the big wheel broke free from its supports and rolled through town. An investigation is currently underway. More on page 12. That's like some Final Destination shit. <laughs> oh my god. 
Flu for thought. Local Dr. K. Walker recommends all locals get their flu shot as soon as possible. Flu season is up. 84 is no different to any other... Just random. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, this is a... Oh, my God. Okay. Oh, my God. This is, like, a problem. I just realized that this is a problem. There's a number next to everyone's name. Was he trying to solve the murder? What the fuck? What the fuck? Oh, there's a key. I'll just Sorry. take that. Might be important. That's weird. Why can I open this? Uh. I guess I'll have to come down here later. Like, this is definitely a problem to solve. Crime syndicate. Marriage announcement. Tim Walker and Peter Stein. Wolf on here. Oh my God. Um, I don't know if I should just come back though. Let's see. I also have no clue who where that record is. Okay, there's that. I don't even know what I'm doing here because I'm supposed to be looking for a record outside a stupid window because Peggy's hmm. an idiot. I wonder how the show's going. I'm looking for a record. That's still locked. Dude, I didn't even find a stupid record. What the fuck, Peggy? What window could you throw it out of? I mean, there's a window. <laughs> oh, here it is. Jesus Christ. Here it is. Long ride home. I was lucky it fell on a freaking mattress since it's a, a record. I feel like it probably would have shattered. Is this not... Okay, that's not where I... Wait, what? Is this not where I came in from? Is that just the only way to get in? I just did it out of order. Oh. At least I'm safe, though. Love this game, by the way. Not gonna spoil anything, but I was gently surprised with one of its endings. Oh, it's got multiple endings? I guess that makes sense. Considering everything else has been multiple choice, why wouldn't there be multiple things? Alright, we're gonna go. Nice. Gingers don't have souls. Besides, it's impossible to throw up. You guys talk about that. I must have, I was lost in what I was doing. I'm very confused. My cat just left the room. I bet it was a Canadian. Isn't that such a good song, folks? And now for... Jesus, Forrest, you've been gone for ages. I thought something had happened. Something did happen. Clive the janitor might be Clive the murderer. No. What? That's too easy. I'll start from the beginning. The, uh, the fire door locked behind me. Yeah, I did it out of order. <laughs> Why did you heave that thing all the way up here? Uh, because the basement's creepy as hell, and I don't like standing around down there. Fair. All right, let's run through this again. We have a creepy board you found in a creepy basement, made by our creepy janitor, who you think is the creepy whistling man. Creepy. Yep. And on the creepy board are the names Chuck Brody... Kim Walker, Rebecca Allen, and Aunt Williams. Correct. Oh, shit. And you think one of these people will be the whistling man's, Clive's, next target. That's right. And we've got to find them. You said there are four locations listed there, too. The hospital, the power station, the gas station, and the trailer park. Clive must think the target is at one of those locations. 
Forrest, you're gonna have to figure out if any of the potential targets are at one of these locations tonight. What? Hit the button if you need any help. Wait, what? Okay. Alright, so... I have to find out if the targets are at... Okay. Okay, so today is... It's, a, it's 1987. September of 1987. Okay. Please, uh... Okay, so this is from July of 10 years ago. Um... Crime syndicate impounded. Criminal operation shut down. 24 arrests inside. Informant walks free. Police have today finally put an end to the long-running car thieving crime syndicate. The arrests were made after a member gave up information on their co-conspirators to investigators. The informant, who asked to remain anonymous and will hereafter be referred to as R.A., has walked free. Is there anyone R.A.? No. Alright, that's not helpful. So now I know that whoever this guy is kind of looks like Chuck. I'm going to assume this is Chuck Brody. So I'm going to put Chuck Brody's thing here. I don't know about this one. So, I'm gonna assume that this is Chuck Brody. Oh yeah, football. So Chuck Brody is a football captain. Um, that's helpful. Got in an accident. From the festival. Okay. Justice for festival victims. To your investigation of the festival accident has concluded. Investigators blame the two engineers that were contracted in from the local power station. Lead engineer Ant and Junior, so Ant and Sean, power station. Talking about horror movies while assembling. Sean and Everett were distracted talking about horror movies while assembling the big wheel, which led to various construction mistakes. They have been ordered to do community service for a total. Community service? Jesus Christ. So, this is Ant and Sean. So, Ant. Gallows Creek Fire Station hires for new staff. Record hire, 12 of which returns at Gallows High. So, Ant Williams. Power station. Trailer for sale. I'm sick of being a local celebrity. People are so mean to me. I only stole a few cars. Who cares? Buy a new one. I'm selling my trailer and leaving town as soon as possible. I just want to get out of here. Please buy it. Trailer for sale. Cheap. Contract. Contact estate agent Tyler Wallace. Uh. No. Hmm. Brady Street. Lot 163 McBrady Street. Um. So this trailer park. Okay, that's not. Okay, so there's a car theft thing. It did say this is the car theft thing. Turtle pie. What the? Gas station. Um, I see. Health and safety. Beep, 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 workout tragedy. Oh my god. Okay, so these three things are related. I just don't know who they're connected to. Um, oh, what's this? Marriage announcement. Kim Walker and Peter Stein, 1970. So, Kim Walker. I'm gonna assume that she's hospital related. I'm also hearing mentions of trailer park here. Okay. Beep beep, look out, tragedy! Five dead, 16 injured after brakes fail on bus. Tragedy struck 
Gallows Creek yesterday afternoon after a bus failed to stop and crashed into a fuel tanker. Oh no! The deceased have been identified as Gallows Creek locals D. Rudd, M. Houston, Stein, Stein, Mildred. Ooh, that's a. Oh, I bet that's Kim's husband. Let me see. Hold on. Um. Peter Stein. Okay, so this is related. In this case. Oh shit, they died. Okay, so it's not them. Because Kim Walker and Peter, Peter Stein got married, so now she's Miss K Stein. I don't know why I'm just assuming. <laughs> stupid fucking stupid. <laughs> okay. And I'm gonna assume she's associated with the hospital since she's a, a doctor. What's this? 1987. So this is recent. Quiet Ridge Health Safety Convention. Tuesday the 1st, Sunday 6th of September. Do you care about health and safety? Good. Then come on down to the the yearly convention. Get started in a career in health and safety advising. Um, learn about health and safety in the workplace featuring special mystery guest, the lead engineer responsible for the Gallows Creek Harvest Festival disaster in 1972. They say you learn from your mistakes. Well, I turned mine into a career. Oh my god, that's really uh, great. <laughs> oh. So here's the power station stuff again. This is recent. Okay. Mario, them MFs, shell and all, jump on the shell. They fake their deaths. What are you guys talking about? <laughs> um, 24 hour gas station bought by local ex lottery winner. Christine's gas repair has been sold to a man who won the lottery 14 years ago. New owner claims it will keep me busy on an evening and has asked to remain anonymous. Okay, which. I did see something about a lottery ticket. So, local legend takes Manhattan. Infamous author of Tell All book, Diary of a Car Thief, moves out of Gallows Creek for a new life in the big city. Oh, she stole our cars, and then she stole our time and money. So, this has got to be Rebecca Allen, then. Okay. I'm getting some more guys. Someone. So who won the fucking lottery? Christine's gas repair? There's also this one. R.A. Yeah, so Rebecca Allen. I didn't catch that earlier. <laughs> There's the ad for the car thief. And a picture of her! Look at that. Okay. Oh, there's clues on there, too. Okay, because the only thing I'm missing is Chuck Brody Athletics. Which, like... Oh, local legend. Oh, because he won the lottery ticket. Okay, okay. Okay. Because they bought a lottery ticket for him. Well, what do I do with this fucking information? <laughs> okay, I think I have everything in order. Yeah, Kim, Aunt. This also. Okay. okay. I feel pretty good about this. I think that's good. How's it going? Uh, I could use some help. Uh, it's not going well. I, I could use I some help. I what I was doing. <laughs> okay, let's review the basics. We need to work out who the next target is. There's four locations, right? And four people. Mm -hmm. We need to figure out if anyone is at any of the four locations tonight. And if they are, we can call them and warn them. How would I know? There must be some connections between the notes. That makes sense. Great. Need any more help? Well, how would I know if they're there? Uh... Yes, please. Uh, yes, please. Sure. 
I think you should be methodical with this. Try grouping the notes by who they're about. I did it up. You could also have a look at the dates and make a timeline. Maybe that will help rule out potential targets first. Got it. Thanks, Peggy. Well, okay. No problem. So Kim is dead. Just throwing that out there. I'm pretty sure she's dead. And Rebecca is gone. And... Quiet Ridge Health and Safety Convention. So, I think he's also gone? I'm wondering if it's Chuck, but... This is from last year, so Chuck owns the gas station now, so it's very possible that he's there. But this this is from a different area. It says Quiet Ridge Health and Safety Convention. So I'm assuming he's somewhere else. So I think it's Chuck. This one left. This one died. This one owns a gas station, so I think it's Chuck. Forrest never pegged Peggy? What the heck? <laughs> No, there's no Peggy. Peggy is the problem. All right, what do we think, guys? Do you think Chuck makes the most sense? I, I feel like or is he he's the only one with a sign that he's still there. I mean, Sunday the 6th. Yep, he's out of town. I think this is it, guys. I think it's Chuck. I think it's Chuck. We're gonna we're gonna go with Chuck. How's it going? I think it's Chuck. I'm ready. I'm ready, Peggy. Are you sure? We've only got one shot at this. <sighs> I'm sure. Let's do this. Okay. Name first. Who do you think the target is? Chuck Brody. And where will I find them? The gas station. Okay, I'm dialing. One moment. This is a lot of pressure for me, uh, just considering I'm just a radio host. Kind of ridiculous. Hello? Chuck Brody! Listen, I know this sounds crazy, but we have reason to believe the Whistling Man is coming for you. You need to get yourself and everyone else out right now. Does it? The Whistling Man? Who the hell are you? Who is this? This is Forrest Nash. Listen, the Whistling Man's back. We found a list with your name on it, and... Oh, God. It, it's today. The year I finally let myself forget. I... Forget? For, forget what? Forget. No, no, man. I gotta get out of here. I... I think he ran off. Same. Well, fingers crossed that Chuck. <laughs> Jesus! It sounds like something blew up. I He's using bombs you. now. I, I, is Chuck? I don't know. Hang on, we're getting a call. Hello, Chuck. Chuck. There's a gas station. The whole goddamn gas station's got up. Is anyone hurt? There's I don't think so. I got everyone to follow me out. Sick. Town's only ambulance was blown to hell, though. Who's yeah. that? Damn it, that fireball threw me. It's super fucking far away. I've got to get to the hospital. I'm right. I'm not feeling great. Forrest, man. I can't thank you enough, but... <laughs> yeah. I gotta go. Wait, I... Damn it. We lost him. What was that about today? Oh, Forrest, the call board is lighting up. Get us into some music while I deal with this. Here's some music while we regroup here on KFAM 189.16, The Stream. We did it! Must be getting pegged because I don't see any other serial killers out here. Oh my goodness. What's happening? What do you want me to do? There's gotta be more in the basement to show us who Clive is targeting. Okay. And if that's the case, we can get ahead of him. Stop the killings before they can happen. What are you doing, 
Sforest, we need to go back down. By we, you mean me, right? Yep. Like I said, I need to handle all these calls. Maybe start with that creepy mannequin room you mentioned before. I still have a lot of questions about those, by the way. Me too. <laughs> what are you guys talking about? <laughs> Alright, let's go back to the basement, guys. Stop talking about Peggy. Every Peggy out there is going to get offended. Okay. Hmm. The key? Was this always here? I must have missed it when I brought everything upstairs. Basement storage. Okay, I guess it's all. some warning before yelling down the intercom? Jeez, Sorry. Buzz the intercom when you find something and want to discuss it. Okay. Peggy, I've found a tape and a map down here. A map of what? Looks like it might be to somewhere in this storage area. Weird. Well, maybe the tape will give us more information. Give it a play. George Ballows. 1968. That's when this all began for me. Follow the maps. Find the tapes. I'll be waiting. Wait. George Barrow? We all heard that he drowned after a night out drinking. Was it actually Clive? Has Clive really been the whistling man for that long? He says I need to follow the maps and find the tapes. Yeah. Stop talking. I guess that's what this map down, is about. Peggy. God damn, Peggy. I think we need to see what else is hidden down here. We? Be careful, Forrest. Keep looking. We is a night. Tell me when you found something. Time of autopsy is 7 a.m. Cause of death is asphyxiation from drowning. The degree of rigor mortis indicates that the subject has been deceased for five hours. That puts the time of Big death. Lead. Call her pig leg. I can't do a hand kill. I gotta listen again. Time thinking. of autopsy is 7 a.m. Cause of death is asphyxiation <laughs> from drowning. The degree of rigor mortis indicates that the subject has been deceased for five hours. That puts the time of death. Helpful. Okay. There's a map. Uh, what am I looking at? Uh, notes and... Okay. I'm gonna go metal cart. Small lacerations to arms, legs, and face. Typically obtained by running through foliage. Severe blistering to the feet. As though the deceased had been running without stopping. This looks useful. Oh shit. Oh shit. Fuck. <laughs> this looks useful, Rose. Sheriff, uh, okay. Police Department, Town of Gallows Creek. This is prepared by Sheriff Matthews. Complaint's name, Miss Sandra Sharp. 1968. At 4 a.m., a call was received from a jogger, a Miss Sandra Sharp, reporting that a body had been found washed up in the reservoir. I drove out to investigate and was able to identify the body at the scene of, at the scene as that of George Barrow. I contacted the coroner's office and then the boy's parents. They informed me that they had not seen him since 7 p.m. on the 2nd. Okay. 
Uh, okay, so I'm looking for the tape. Is this even the right one? I thought that there was... Okay. It's a shelf with a bunch of... This is huge. I can't see at all. Oh, you guys can see. My actual monitor is much darker than the actual, um, Settings in there, I swear. That's not it. I'm not doing this. That is a box. The tape keeps throwing me off. Like the tape on the boxes keeps throwing me off. It's this one. Preliminary toxicology results shows no signs of inebriation. However, a high amount of cortisol was found. Paper? Indicating elevated levels of stress in the immediate moments before death. I remember having a stack of it in my living room when I was a kid, but I didn't know what it was for. <laughs> uh, and then I also had the paper that would come out of, I think it was copy machines or printers or, or fax machines that had like the dotted lines on the side, and uh, I loved ripping those things off. This one's a cabinet with a fan. I think it's this one, yeah. Additionally, there appears to be a post-mortem injury to the arm. It looks like it was trapped in a car door. Sketchball City, I don't like it. Look this. I don't see the games. Lots of games. It is the coroner's opinion that the subject likely feared for his life and was chased, resulting in a fall from a height into a body of water where he hit his head, was knocked out, and drowned. Following that, he was moved. Drop the cell phone. We need to have a talk. It's distorted. That recording. Shut it off. This has to be important. I'm sorry I made you do this. George Theodore Barrow. White male, 18. Carpenter Avenue, Gallows Creek. God, I'm running so bad. I'm sorry I made you do this, Virginia. Virginia Sullivan. Oh, God damn. This one's just, the next one is on a desk. It's like this. Why so bad? Yeah. If you're <laughs> listening to this, then I'm probably dead. What the? I'm a man who likes to stay informed. I've got subscriptions okay. to newspapers all over the country. A few weeks ago, I noticed headlines cropping up in those papers, one after the other. Each headline about a murder. Each murder, the death of someone I knew almost 20 years ago. And each one drawing closer to Gallows Creek. Drawing closer to the anniversary. None of us are innocent. But I don't think we deserve killing. All I hope now is that I can save some folk from the worst. 
What the hell? Peggy is not gonna believe this. Okay, hold on guys. I'll be right back. If I don't blow my nose, I'm gonna die. <laughs> You guys having fun? <laughs> I'm glad. I last saved two, 492 seconds ago. I know I had to... Oh, I should save just in case. All right, let's... I want to see what Virginia has to say. Let's see. This is the second filing cabinet I could open that... Oh! oh! This is the record I wanted! Ooh, a new vinyl for my collection. Yes. Alright, well, I guess we'll go back up with this fucking autopsy report. We gonna get spooked? We gonna get spooked? Trapper Keeper. Close chat be lit. Yeah, the chat is the only reason to attend the live stream. You guys keep it lively. <laughs> Liberate this. Starling security. Let's see. And... Oh. So, so, what's his name? Kelvin was a Starling Security delivery or installer? This is interesting. How do I, like, can I, like, tuck it away? Is that a thing? Oh, I can. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I can hold two things. Uh, okay. Well. Oh, there's security notes? Oh, no. Oh, no. This. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. Alright, well. 
I'll leave that there. I'm gonna go get the other autopsy report. God damn it, start. What was it? Ooh, nope. Wait. Okay, I got two things. Hopefully, this is a good idea. I don't even know. <laughs> I only have two hands, guys. There's so much to do. What the fuck? Wait, what? What did I miss? Oh, I gotta talk to Peggy on the intercom. No. What have you found, Forrest? A lot. It's an autopsy tape. Doesn't say for who, but I think it must be for George. Poor George. He was so young. Something's bugging me, Peggy. What do you mean? Got I swear up, I recognize the voice of the woman talking on the tape. I just can't place it. Seriously? It's a, it's do you think you've met her before? I really? don't know. I mean, I just got here recently. I don't know. It's Victoria. Found another tape. It talks more about how George died. What did it say? It sounds like he was running for his life. Sprinting through trees and bushes, getting cut up all over. Drive someone to do that. I'm not sure yet. There's also a tape about a toxicology report. There were no signs of drinking or that he was on anything. What? But everyone said he went swimming drunk and drowned. It was in the newspaper and everything. I found a written autopsy report. What does it say? According to that, it's just like you said at the start. George drowned after getting drunk. Said he liked to fight, too. But that contradicts the tape. I know. And I think I know why. There's a note with the report that says, I'm sorry I made you do this, Virginia. If it was on the autopsy report, then Virginia must be our coroner. Yep. Wait, the caller from earlier, when we had to call the takeout restaurant, wasn't her name Virginia? <sighs> if only she had made it. Then we might have learned more about what's going on. Okay. We did what we could. The takeout idea was a long shot as it was. Oh, I found shit. a tape that introduces a new detail to the story. Post-mortem injury. Apparently, died. his arm got yes. caught in a car door. A car door? Yeah, after he died. How do you suppose they can tell? How can they tell? I'm a radio producer, not a coroner. Hmm. The written report I found doesn't mention it at all. How did his arm get trapped in a car door after he died? Unless he got it when the police collected his body. I guess someone else must have moved him after he was dead to where he was eventually found. But the report, what is going on here? I found a police report. Mentions a friend from earlier, Sandra Sharp. Sandra, the jazz runner? That's right. She found George's body washed up at the reservoir. The reservoir? Yeah? What's strange about that? George got cuts from running through foliage, right? But there's no forest around there. Also, how did it wash up at the reservoir? What do you mean? Reservoirs don't have tides. But that's what the police report said. It's not possible, though. I did a school project on reservoirs and got an A. But, yeah, not important right now. The important thing is that it doesn't make sense. What are you suggesting, then? That the body was originally found somewhere other than what the report suggests. That the sheriff tried to cover it up, but accidentally let something slip? Something like that, I think. Well, Sheriff Matthews wrote the report. If he hadn't been eviscerated, we could have asked him. True. But Sandra is still alive. Once we're done down here, we should give her a call. In another tape, the coroner comes to the same conclusion as I did. George was running from something. Those people had died. Maybe an animal? Maybe, but then there's this next bit where the coroner thinks he was moved post death. So she agrees with us. At the end of the tape, someone bursts in and demanded Virginia stop recording. I I think it was Clive. This is starting to make sense now. This, this is a conspiracy to cover up what happened to George. 
I, um, I think I found Clive's last recording. I think Clive might be gone. Gone? I found a confession. Not for any killings, but for playing a part in covering up George's death. He left this behind in case he died. He hoped someone would find it. Possibly. We've had a lot of callers tonight, but maybe not every victim made it to the phone, you know? We don't know how many there really are. Christ, Forrest, that's dark. I know, but Clive said he had read about other murders in other towns, and that the murders were all folks who knew about the incident. And the killings were getting closer to Gallows Creek. He said he wanted to do something good for once. The board in his office. He wasn't tracking people down to kill them. He was tracking them down to save he them. One person. Ugh, why didn't he just come out with all of this? Uh, he said his employer threatened his family if he spoke out about any of it. His employer? The one who orchestrated the cover-up? Oh, Clive. I'm sorry for thinking you'd killed all those people. Do you think you found everything? I think so. Forrest, what's going on here? Someone wanted that boy's death to seem like an accident. And they hired Clive to make it look that way. Oh. Come back upstairs when you're ready. We need to figure out our next step. Uh oh. Uncover Clive's research. Ooh. Thank God you're back, Forrest. I've been running out of stuff to pad our airtime with. Peggy, you work in radio. Forrest, I'm stressed. I mean, really. How are we supposed to keep a show going with all this happening? You're not very useful, Peggy. Beats me. But we gotta do it and we're going to. <sighs> You're right. So, what's the plan now? Oh, I talked to that lady. <sighs> That was the whole reason I got the stupid record. Well, we know Sandra was involved in George's death. Do you want to call her? I do. All right, but before we go asking questions, I think we should know what we want to ask. Is that fair? Yeah, we need to ask her about finding the body. She was the one who discovered it, but something just doesn't add up. A hundred percent. She knows more than she's saying. I wonder what she's hiding. We'll hopefully find out soon. Anyway. Just be careful when you're talking to her. Don't push too hard. We don't want her to hang up. Yeah. I'll be careful. All right, calling her now. Hopefully she's at her jazz studio. Oh yeah, that's the first lady we saved. Aha, Forrest, you're through. Hello, this is Sandra at Jazz Pizzazz Jazz Studio. Who is this? Hello again, Sandra. It's Forrest Nash of 189.16, The Scream. And you're live on air. <laughs> Oh, I always thought folks called into a radio show, not the other way around. How jazzy. What can I do for you? Uh, well, <laughs> we're trying to understand what's okay. behind the attacks tonight. We had a few questions. My forest, of course. Heck, after the way you saved my life, I'd say yes to just about anything <laughs> you asked. Why were you targeted? Be serious. Do you know why the whistling man might have targeted you. Ha! As far as I can tell, he was just a knife-wielding psycho with superhuman cardio. He'd have chased after anybody. Right. Well, we think he might be chasing specific people. People who know about the death of a boy named George. Oh, I don't know anything about that. Sorry. Hmm. Have you had to keep quiet about Anything? Any secrets you've had to keep? What would I have to keep quiet about? I don't know. I mean, could be that you've seen something or heard something. I never saw anything. And even if I did, what would that matter? And, and it was years ago. Sandra, are you okay? It was years ago. We know, Sandra. You do? You know about? Uh, yes. Of course. Drop the act. This studio is my life. After I found the body in the river, I couldn't lose my studio. 
Do you understand? Sure. I understand. When the rent just kept going up, he said he'd stop if I just needed to keep quiet. And everything would be okay. Sandra? Who was he? He was... He said, if I told everyone I found the kid in the reservoir instead of the river, he... He... Uh, I'm sorry. I can't do this. No! And she's gone. I don't think that could have gone any better. Okay. You truly did great, Forrest. Well, folks, <laughs> if anyone out there has any thoughts on what's going on tonight, please call in. That's good timing. We've got a call waiting just this second. This only a fucking lady who I got that stupid ass record for. Welcome to 189.16 The Scream with me, your host, Forrest Nash. Hi, Boris. I know this is really out of the blue with it's everything happening tonight. But I wondered if you could send this special birthday message to no. my uncle. I feel like this is the pizza guy again. I was waiting for her to make one. Oh, don't. You'll be waiting all night. <laughs> you want to do that now? Really? Why? Of course it's now. Like right here. It's his birthday. Damn. I won't have a chance to do it again until next year. May as well, Forrest. Uh, <laughs> fine. What's his name? <laughs> Thank you, Forrest. He's my Uncle Ronnie. Got the his line. first name's Peter, but he never liked his name. But since he always had salt and pepper hair, even as a kid, can you believe it? <laughs> Folks always called him Pepper. Uh, thanks for the history lesson. Is there anything besides happy birthday you would like to say to Mr. Pepper? Oh my God, damn it! Yes, tell him he can get the best birthday deals of. Party so packages pissed. here at Pony's Pizza. Start a good job. You son of a bitch. Stop calling us. <laughs> you son of a Damn bitch. It, Peggy, this is your fault. My fault? I said I didn't want to do it. Don't blame me because Brian Ponty can't control himself. <sighs> Don't worry. We've already got another caller on the line. Finally. Just pick it up, okay? <laughs> this is 189.16, The Scream. I'm Forrest Nash. You're on the air, caller. <laughs> Caller. <sighs> Jimmy's dead. What the fuck is this? Ponty. Ponty's pizza always delivers. <laughs> Come rain or sleet or whistling man, we'll be there. <laughs> so crazy. <laughs> Forest. Forrest? Are you okay? <sighs> oh my god, Forrest? calm down, dude. I hope the whistling man gets in with his own pizza slicer. Jesus, Forrest? Sorry, sorry, that was... That was too much. It's okay. It's been a high-stress night. Don't worry about him anymore, okay? Not for tonight, anyway. I think he's spent for now. We've got another call, whenever you're ready. Folks, don't spend your money at Pawnee's Pizza. That's all I'm going to say about that. Moving along, I'd like to welcome another caller to 189.16, The Scream, with me, Forrest Nash. Who, may I say, is calling? Well, hello again, Forrest. Don. Don? We played your song, Long Ride Home. Did you hear it? Can you tell us? Uh, never mind that now. Oh, you First, bitch. I'm calling because I need your help. I went outside for that stupid fucking thing. Are you in danger? Oh, I sure am. Do you mean... Yes, he's after me now. You? I think so. He must have heard me on the radio helping you. How did you help me? Helping? You didn't exactly help. Maybe I've been helping more than you know. I was out following a lead, trying to work out who would be next, after Chuck. And what happened? And I started to feel like I was being followed. 
I came back to my apartment building. We'll get but stuck. This <laughs> newfangled security system has me locked out. I need you to help me get inside. Don't you have a key to get in? Only for the apartment door. The front gate requires an entry code. The future is electronic, I guess. <laughs> I need that code to get inside. Which apartment block do you live in? Maybe one of our listeners lives there too. It's the New Woodside apartment building between town hall and a trailer park. But I doubt any of your listeners live there. I don't have many neighbors. Sounds like a prime piece of real estate. The sound really train. carries at night. Trailer park. Shit. I'm guessing you're not a dog person. No, I'm not. It's my neighbor's dog. Boy, I wish he'd muscle that thing and oh. And now he's blasting David Scopo out of his window. Excellent. I can't get any. What's the name of the security system? Uh, there's a sticker on the box. It says Starling Security 4000. There's a keypad, and it looks like it wants a, a six digit number. Starling Security 4000, huh? That's right. Very newly installed. I need the key code before the whistling man gets me. Yeah, of course. Don't worry, Don. Thank you, Forrest. I knew I could count on you. I'll send out of sight. Call me back soon. All right, folks. Here's a little tune for you all to enjoy while I try to break Dawn into her apartment. You were pretty quiet there, Peggy. Forrest, was it just me or was there something? Yeah, it wasn't just you. Something was weird about that. Yeah, well, tell you what. We have a Starling 4000, or whatever, here at KFAM. Clive bought one for the station. Maybe we can find something to help. Okay. Well, I'm not sure who. This Is this not obvious? someone. Is it not obvious what she's doing? I feel like it's obvious what she's doing. She's asking for the PIN code of the same <sighs> okay, security system. Okay, so she's locked out of the Woodside Apartments, and somewhere, Clive probably has the papers for the Starling 4000. This is a bad idea. Dude, no. No, Dawn is trying to break her ass in here. Who is Dawn? Is Dawn Locked his tight. mom? Is Dawn George's mom? The dead boy's mom? This is stupid. I don't want to do this. I'm like literally killing myself when I know it's a bad idea. in a drawer. This is stupid, guys. This is so stupid. I hate doing stupid things on purpose. how to get into a building, basically. Let's grab this, too. It's all the way in the back, isn't it? Where is it? Oh, no. Is it not? Uh, maybe it was on the first desk. Shit, where is it? I don't remember. I don't even want to do this. This is a bad idea. We just so happen to have the same security system. What about that? Starling 4000. User manual. Ah. These codes should come in handy. Order delivery form. Starling must have left this by accident. The okay. system's not even installed at Woodside. At Woodside? 
inside. Music is menacing. This wallpaper is sick. Though these records, very cool. All right. So, what's her apartment called? She says she's next to the trailer park. Where did she say? So she's next to a trailer park, and it sounds like she's next to trains, train station, or train tracks, which I'm assuming is the yellow dotted line. Is she over here? Alex, Peter. Where did she say she was? Fuck. Okay, um... Woodside Apartments. 1033. Oh my god. When entering codes and commands... Wait, I thought you said it was a six-digit code. Okay. Uh, when entering codes and commands, sequential stroke. <laughs> when entering codes and commands, a se uh, sequential key depressions must be made within four to five seconds of one another. If four to five seconds elapse without a key depression, the entry will be aborted and must be repeated from the beginning. Be sure to observe this precaution when performing any of the procedures in this manual. If you make a mistake while entering, oh, excuse me. A security code stop and then while entering a security code stop and then press star and start over. We stop in the middle while entering a code and then immediately start the entry over. An erroneous code may be entered. Okay. So star to restart. You have four to five seconds in between each button to press the next button. Alarm test, maintenance call code, alarm test, entry code. 715. 914. Our state of the art security system uses a six digit code system. Simply enter the code into the keypad and feel the total peace of mind. The Starlink Security Alarm System 4000 comes with a range of features. The default codes for these features are listed below. Please change these codes. Wait, I don't. So is she at this place then? It says 1033 order number. Oh, it's the order number. Okay. Okay. I don't. I don't. What side apartments? Which is this one? Nice the tra trailer park. Alright. Welcome back, Forrest. Find anything? The Starling 4000 security manual. It's got a bunch of codes. Good. And did you find anything else? I saw a list of everyone else who bought the Starlink 4000. Know who was on there? Oh my god. Roller Ricky! I... Do you think we should give him a call? Is that crazy? I don't know what you'd say, but... That might be a good idea. Okay, one moment. I got the number here. One of them is our station. Patching you through. Gabriel's Hospital, Roller Ricky. What the fuck am I gonna say? What am I doing? Why did I do Shit. this? He probably can't hear it over the music. Forrest, I don't know about this. This is super weird. Just put me through to Don. I'll take care of this one way or another. Okay, if you say so. Line one, whenever you're ready. Wait, what if Don is at Ricky's apartment? Because I thought Ricky was home. This is sus, dude. I almost want to give her the wrong code. I want to give her the wrong code because, like, okay. So, okay, hold on. Because, okay, I don't know about the hospital, but the gas station is where the other guy was. There's the apartments, our radio station, and then Rick 
Nikki's roller rink. So I'm wondering if she's outside, because Ricky was with his dog and he said he wanted to go roller skating. He didn't say he was roller skating. So is he not at home? What do you guys think? Oh, fuck, I don't know. I want to get it wrong because I want to save the guy with the dog. But what if I'm wrong? Fuck, I don't know. Don, are you there? Just this is Forrest scared. Nash from 189.16, The Scream. Oh, thank God you're back. I'm so afraid. What's the code to the gate? I don't think it's the right alarm test. The code is 191519. Thank you, Forrest. Is she? Yes. Yeah, stay out. Nobody disrespects the sanctity of the ring. Don't ever come back here again. Yay! Oh. I'm calling the cops. Thank God. Hello? Is someone there? Ricky, get back inside and turn on the radio. Whoever that was, she was trying to break into the ring. She? Forrest, man, you got no idea. That was him. That was the whistling man. The alarm gave me just enough time to get my rifle. I don't like hurting folk, but I can't let anything happen to Maxie. He's my best friend, you know? I... Listen, man, I'm heading back inside. I'm gonna barricade that window. My man, thank you. You and Peggy can skate for free whenever you want forever. That's a done deal. I... Thanks, Ricky. Can't wait. You got it. Talk to you soon. Yay. Okay, Gallows Creek. Here's some music while we process what just happened. That was crazy. Yay. I knew it was a scam. Mwahaha. Uh, okay. That so, the whistling man is a woman? Yeah, I worked at... <laughs> I know. I, I can't believe it. She called up. You spoke to her multiple times. I knew she wasn't right. Is that right, Sherlock? She was being weird. Why do you think she requested that song? Uh, get me outside. I, she actually I mean, maybe she actually wanted it. Could be her favorite killing song. Ugh, that's awful. How would she know she threw it outside? So, though? what now? I guess I should make an announcement. We do have new info. Okay, kill the music and you can make the announcement. Okay, you're live in three, two. Hey, folks, this is Forrest Nash here. I hope you're all safely locked inside. For those of you listening to that last call, you might be wondering what to make of it all. Here's our take. We now believe the killer is actually a woman. One who might manipulate you into letting her in before she attacks you. I'm sad to say, but it's time to trust no one. The killer was calling themselves Don. This could be a fake name. If anyone needs help or you have info on the killer, please call Peggy. in. Thank you. <laughs> you folks have my new number, right? How could Peggy it's be killing people when she's behind there? Hopefully, our next caller can help shed some light on our killer. Damn. Hey, we had a call come in. Okay, folks, time to take a call. Where are we at? Okay. Um, I only have one application. Let me see. This is Forrest Nash, and you're listening. Please help me. My name is Casey Moore. I'm a 25 Nancy Drive. My best friend's been stabbed. He's he's bleeding everywhere. Oh, I don't shit. know what to do. Please help me. 
Is he still breathing? Yeah, but he's bleeding out fast. I really need help. Please. Take a breath. We'd been out at the reservoir. We were heading back to his place when we heard this whistling all of a sudden. Oh, shit. He just started freaking out. He screamed at me, told me to hide. I'd never seen him like that, and I, I just panicked and ran and hid in a bush. And just oh, left no. him alone. Forrest. Then what happened? He this went up the road fast. and talked to someone. I couldn't really hear or see anything. It sounded like he might have known the person, and they just stabbed him. Yeah, she was just at the apartments. Like, the apartments are way the fuck over. Oh no, she's at the roller rink. Casey, was he talking to a woman? I don't know. I had a mask and wore all black. That's all I know. Please, we okay. need help here. Goddamn, I'll get you help, busy. but I need to know. Where did the masked person go? They left. They left him to bleed out. I waited until they were gone, then dragged him into the garage and called 911. Wait, why didn't she make sure he was dead? was destroyed in the explosion at the gas station. You should get all the info you can. Can you tell us where your friend was stabbed? They stabbed him in the stomach, and then stabbed him again in his leg when he was on the ground, and it's... Oh, the knife is still there in his leg! What's your friend's name, Casey? It's Jason. Jason Parker. We'll be right back. Peggy, patch us through to the hospital. On it. Phoning St. Gabriel's now. Switch to line two. What are they gonna do? There's no ambulance. Hello, St. Gabriel's Hospital. How can Hi, I help you? Hi, this is Forrest Nash from 189.16. <clears throat> we have a stab victim at 25 Nancy Drive named Jason Parker. He's been stabbed in the stomach and the leg. He's bleeding heavily. Oh god, I'm sorry. But the ambulance is... Well, you know. Ambulance? I know, but I you please, like that. we need something or he's going to die. Forrest, I... Listen. You're going to have to get him here. What? We need to see him, and we can't get there ourselves right now. We don't have any way to drive him right now. And even if we did, he's bleeding out fast. All right, listen. We need to buy him time to get here. That means stopping the blood first, Stop and then it. finding someone to stabilize him. To stabilize him, you really need someone with first aid training. Do either of you have any? No. Me neither. Uh, damn it. We're not anywhere I'm near really the sorry about this, but enemies. I have other patients who can't wait. All I can do is talk you through the procedure as quick as I can, and then leave the rest to you. You think you can handle that? Playing telephone. We don't really have much choice. Hit me. Okay, from the top. If he's bleeding out, then you need to get him comfortable and try to stem the bleeding. Lay him down. Apply continuous pressure directly to the affected areas. When the bleeding slows, get a clean cloth of some kind and hold it over the wounds. Get them comfortable. Apply pressure. Clean cloths when slowed. Well, Got it. Have that shit? I think. They're at a reservoir. He's stabbed, right? If the object he was stabbed with is still in him, don't take it out. It's stopping the worst of the bleeding right now. If anything, you should secure it so it stays where it is. I wouldn't have thought of that. It makes sense, though. God, that was a lot of info. But I think we can handle if this. If you're writing this down, Glad you're going to take it so the far, call, right, Peggy? To go. Right, Peggy? That would make the most sense. I'm still with you, Doc. What else do we need to know? If he's lost a lot of blood, he may enter shock. If he does, act fast. If you apply the cloth and it's bleeding through, don't remove it. Just apply another on top of it. If it's safe, elevate his legs to get blood circulating to his vital organs. Try to keep him warm. Get him to rest and reassure him. We need the patient to stay calm. <sighs> All right. Uh, don't replace bandages. Elevate his legs. Keep him warm and calm. This is a lot. I'm really sorry. That's as much as I can give you right now. Try to stop the bleeding. Find someone to get him stabilized and get him here as quick as you can. Good luck. All right, Forrest. Casey's still on line one. Okay. Hello? Hello, Forrest? Are you there? 
Hi, Casey. I'm here. How are you doing? I need help! I've been putting pressure on his stomach wound since you left. But he's still bleeding. I don't know what to do. That's good, Casey. The nurse said to do that. What about the knife in his leg? It's gotta be hell. Should I pull it out? No, don't touch the knife. The bleeding will get worse if you pull it out. Are you sure? I'm sorry. I'm gonna stop making suggestions. Yeah. No, don't worry, Casey. We're a team here. We're all going to get Jason through this. Yeah. Casey, is his leg wound bleeding right now? I hate looking at that knife. Yeah, yeah. It's bleeding. His stomach is worse, though. All right, I, I think we need to leave that knife alone. All right. I'll just keep putting pressure on his stomach for now. Forrest, can I have a word? Yeah. Casey, I'm gonna have a quick word with Peggy. Keep putting that pressure on and let us know when the bleeding is under control. You're doing great. But what if something happens? We'll still be here. Just shout if you need anything and we'll be there. I promise. Oh shit. Okay, I'll wait. Jason? Please be okay. Oh shit. Oh shit. I thought. I thought. I don't know. Oh shit. Oh shit. I thought. I thought that they wanted me to address the stomach bleeding first. Talk to me, Peggy. What's up, Peggy? We can't stay on the line with her all night. Dawn is still out there. What if other people need us? <sighs> You're right. She's probably on her way to her next target right now. Exactly. <laughs> and you heard Jesus the nurse. Off. We need someone there with training who can stabilize him. He's got to get to the hospital somehow. Any suggestions, Peggy? I might. A little before you started working here, KFAM did a mandatory first aid training course. Me and Karen missed it because we were away on a producer getaway. You skipped it, didn't you? I... Never mind. So, how does KFAM's first aid course help us? Casey said they're at 25 Nancy Drive, right? Yeah? Why? They put up a bunch of cheap houses around there about 10 years ago. So a bunch of people here at the station live around there. Do you think any of them could help Casey and Jason? Probably, but I don't know who lives there. And since I missed the training day, I don't know who knows first aid. Oh my God. Could you call them and ask? I don't know everybody's numbers. Why did you even I've bring I've only this ever up called then? Karen. Everybody's personnel info is probably in Reggie's office. Got it. I'll look through their files in Reggie's office. It's a life or death situation. I'm sure they won't mind. Right. But there are a couple of problems with that. God damn it. Go on. It's sensitive information. So Reggie probably locked it in his safe. Great. Great. Do you have any idea what the combo for the safe could be? Not tonight. a clue. Fuck. Reggie's a serial note taker, though. Maybe something in his office will give it away. Right. There is something else. I'm not going to like this, am I? Have you ever heard, the future is floppy? Peggy, what the hell are you talking about? I'm talking about floppy disks. Floppy disks are like these futuristic things that have information on them. So futuristic. You put them in a computer and they do something. Peggy, I know what a floppy disk is. Anyway, Reggie decided that the future is floppy and started phasing out our physical records and replacing them with these floppy disks. So funny. I imagine it's the same for our personnel files. That's good to know. Since we haven't heard anything from Casey, I'm guessing Jason's okay for now. I'll check out Reggie's office and see what I can find. I didn't want her to You'll need a key for the knife because I want her to I'll just slide it under my door now. Since they said Thanks, it was worse. <sighs> I just have to look around. Good. I'll patch my mic down to the office so you'll hear me over the intercom. And I want to keep playing, but I feel like I'm going to pass out. Come on, Rufor. Rufor has been shot all night. Where's your office? I don't remember which one. Where's your office? I'm not getting in there tonight. Okay, okay, I just... There's... There are lots of doors. It's not marked. 
Is it downstairs? I don't think there's another door in here. Looks like I need a four digit code. Insert. Remember, Reggie Jr.'s birthday is 910, not 109. Last year was a disaster. Clive, if you're reading this, stop selling my post it notes. Ask Jeannie where those tapes are. It's been weeks now overdue. Alien sightings. We have floppy disks. Floppy disks. Floppy disks. Floppy disks. Uh, Could this be it? Deep cuts, top secret. Pizza delivery killer who kills with pizza cutter. Free slice on me. Terrifyingly, there is never any pizza. What happened to the original delivery guy? Maybe write him in the final girl's in as the final girl's boyfriend. Protagonist is college student Megan, surname to follow. She's smart, beautiful, resourceful, lactose intolerant. Okay, this is like a terrible script. Can I interact with this in any way? Uh, I don't think that's the right one. Acts forever need to write pitch document, good title, bring back original. Protagonist villain. Um, nope, that's not working. Must be something else. Very important date. So it's. What year though? It says 0910. Very important date. Oh shit, it's important. First aid to the injured. Reginald Scott. Okay, so Reggie. First aid, that's helpful. Can I interact with this little? Nope, of course not. Hey Peggy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you find what we need? No. I can't figure out how to get into this stupid safe. No worries, we still have a little time. Reggie writes almost everything down somewhere. I'd recommend you start reading. I'll have a look around. You're probably right. I'll let you know when I find something, or don't. Could this be it? No, it's not. It's not that. <laughs> Remember Reggie Jr.'s birthday is 9-10. It's... I mean... Is that not what I put? Oh nine ten. 9 Okay, let's try it one more time. Nope, that's not working. Must be something else. Uh, there's like nothing in this room. Maybe partner with content. Okay, there's numbers in this, but it's a date. It takes place on 1107. Very important date for the town. Okay, let's try that. 1107. Nice! Yeah, yell about it. Oh, 
Oh my god, look at all these fucking floppy disks. Personnel file Nash Forest. Okay, I want... Reginald Scott. Very Bradley. Barbara. It's just John. None of these people are Reginald Scott. Nash Forrest. Peggy Weaver. Karen Lawson. Bradley Carter. What the fuck? <sighs> it's this guy. It says Reginald Scott has successfully completed the standard course in first aid. Oh, that's- but that's this guy. Okay, so maybe... Hold on, let me go look and see if anyone else has that. Certificate. Okay, I don't see anything for Barb. Shared office. Um, I don't see it over here either. I wonder if it's the intern. I didn't even see her name. Uh, shit. Really hoping it would just be on the wall in here. Maybe I have to talk to Peggy. I know she said she knows who it isn't. She doesn't have it either. Damn it. Okay, let's go talk. Hopefully she can help us. First aid to the injured. Versus first aid to the healthy. I guess would be the uh, other course you could take. Okay, um... I'm in, Peggy. I found the floppy disks. Just put it in the slot, right? You got it. Remember, we need somebody with medical training who lives near 25 Nancy Drive. Let me know when you've got somebody. And don't waste time on anybody that can't help us. All I know is Reginald Scott, which is Reggie, and this is Reggie's office. Okay, well, maybe it's on the discs. Let's look at the discs. Let's look at the discs. Let's see. Let's try it with John. Alright, up, down. Get out of there. Come on now. Come on now. Did I imagine that? What the fuck was that sound? Did I imagine that? Hey Peggy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you find what we need? I got the safe open, but Did I'm not sure that? what I'm supposed what to be fuck? looking for in these files. We need to know who can do first aid, and we need them to be close to Nancy Drive. Anything further away than a street or two is probably too far. Anyone who ticks those two boxes is our best bet. Got it. I think I'll take I got, another look at the files. I think I got I'll lucky let you right know when I find back. something or don't. So he lives on Nancy Drive. John refused to engage with the first aid trainer during the course. I know he's a war medic, but okay, I'm gonna assume it's this guy. Bunch of a bunch of medical equipment in his home. So we need to call John Hedges. Five four two. 0735. Alright, so we're gonna call John Hedges 542 0735. Do I have to memorize that? Hey, Peggy, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you find what we need? I think I know who our best bet is to help Casey and Jason. Alright, good work. Who should I. 
Casey, I'm here. What's wrong? Jason started going pale. I tried to get him to rest, but he just threw up everywhere. What's happening? What do I do? God, it sounds like he's going into shock. Casey, just stay calm. It's going to be okay. Casey, calm down. You've done everything right. I... I bet he did. I need you to listen to me, okay? For Jason. What did the nurse say to do about shock? Elevate. Casey, I need you to elevate Jason's legs. We need to get the blood flowing to his vital organs. Got it. Jason, stay with me. I I'm just gonna move you. This might what? hurt. It's so funny. I know this is the whole point of the game, but okay. just them talking about like every single thing they're doing the is so funny to me. I'm looking at my notes. We need to get Jason as warm and comfortable as possible. Why couldn't you speak up earlier? Do you have anything Peggy? you could use nearby, Casey? Yeah. I still have some laundry next to me. I'll wrap him in some blankets. <laughs> just give me a second. <laughs> oh, he's conscious. Sorry. Sorry. <sighs> It is a little late. Okay, I think after we save Jason, Just I'm gonna clock now, out. Okay? Boy, I'm scared. He's not doing well. Is he? Is he gonna? Casey, I need you to be strong for Jason. Sit Thank with you. him and reassure him that everything's gonna be okay. Okay? We need to call John Hedges. He lives on Nancy Drive. He didn't really participate in the first aid training, but he's a former war medic. He's probably the most trained person we have. Really? I never really spoke to him before. A war medic, huh? Yeah, and according to Reggie's notes, John keeps all of his old equipment at his house. He's something of a hoarder. All right. What's his number? Uh, five, four, two, zero, seven, three, five. What is it? Before? Calling now. Let's help you pick. Uh, who the hell is this calling you? What time is it? John, it's Forrest Nash here at KFAM. We have an emergency and we need your help. Forrest? If this is a work emergency, then it can wait until the goddamn morning. Just leave me a note like everybody else. John, no, this is a medical emergency. A man has been stabbed by the whistling man or. Never mind. He, he's badly hurt, and he's going to die unless we get someone to him now. The whistling man? What kind of joke is this? John, we're not kidding. A man is going to die if we don't help him right now. Seriously? I, I haven't been called on for over 10 years. Where's the patient? What's his condition? He's at 25 Nancy Drive. I think we got his friend to stem the bleeding, but he's gone into shock. He's passed out right now. Extent of his injuries? From what we were told, he has two major stab wounds. One to the stomach and one to the leg. The knife is still in his leg, and the stomach wound is open. Understood. Let me grab a few supplies and I'll head right over. Damned if he dies on my watch. <laughs> Thank you, John. We'll let him know you're on your way. Good luck. Hello, Casey. Are you there? How are we doing? What about now? Is he still thrashing? He's passed out. Please tell me you found someone to help. Casey, help is on the way. My colleague will be there soon. You hear that, Jason? Someone is coming. You're going to be just fine. Just hold on for me, okay? Just hold on. Come on. Hello, Casey. John Let him into what? I thought they were at the president. Casey, I'm gonna need your help. Forrest, Peggy, don't you two worry. We've got this. We did here. it! Okay. <laughs> Forrest, we'll call you back later. I have to go now. Good luck, everyone. God, I hope 
she's gonna be all right. <sighs> this is and a lot that, to put on a radio show. show. <laughs> We're sending our best wishes to Jason. I'm talking to you. Well, after all that excitement, I think we could use some music. Uh, come back upstairs when you're ready. Don't be such a downer, Peggy. I just saved everyone again. I don't know what that thud was. That scared the shit out of me. Alright. Um, I think that I am going to end the game here for tonight, at least. Um, I think I might have a cold. <laughs> All right. Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying the game so far. I think it's pretty interesting. It's definitely just kind of like multiple choice books, kind of like the choose your own adventure books. The only ones I really remember were the Goosebumps ones. Those are the ones I read. Um, but I'm enjoying it. It's very, like, quirky <laughs> is the best word I could think of. Um, but, yeah, I'm either going to play this uh, tomorrow or Wednesday to wrap it up because I just wanted to get I was trying to play it all in one go, but uh, I'm going to pass out if I try to do that. I'm already, like, mummified right now. Anyways. Uh, yeah, Roach, I caught whatever you had. <laughs> um, anyways, I appreciate you guys sticking around. Uh, it's like the whole gang is here right now. <laughs> um, yeah, everything kind of started off rough, so I'm glad we were able to play for so long. But I hope the rest of your guys' weekend goes well if I don't see you tomorrow. And uh, I will see you Wednesday if I don't see you tomorrow. And I hope you have a good night. I'm tired. All right. Good night, Aw. Uh, good night, Adrian. Good night, Roach. Good night, Alex, if you're still there and anyone else who's watching. I appreciate you guys sticking around for so long. Make sure you get some sleep. The weekend only lasts so long. Have a good night. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. I got it timed up this. Time. <laughs>